Very good morning and good afternoon to everybody. Let us begin the first day of the session. Thank you everyone for joining the day one of online training of women entrepreneurs on expanding online business through e-commerce platform and digital marketing. Before we begin, I'd like to share a few house rules for all the participants. Uh, firstly, request everybody to please mute your microphones and switch your videos. Secondly, I'll ask everybody, as I've already requested, to please change your profile name as name followed by your country. If you click on the profile screen of yours, you'll see three dots appearing. Click on the option to rename your profile name. First name, oblique class name, oblique your country. Thirdly, if you have any queries during the Q&A session, you may raise your hand or switch on your video during the break or during the Q&A session or you may even feel free to write in the chat box. We are there to help you. Thank you. So before I now begin with the inaugural session, can I all invite everybody to please switch on your camera so that you can take a group photo to publish it on the chat, on the social media platforms. Good morning, Ratnakar sir. Good morning, good afternoon, Adnan sir. Good morning, good morning, good afternoon. Good morning. Good, Good afternoon. Morning. Hi, thanks. Uh, so can we have everybody please smiling so then you can click the picture at a count of three. Uh, one, two, three. Thank you. I'm clicking the pictures now. So you can start, Savira. Yes, sir. So one second, I'll just take the last page picture as well, and then we'll begin. Okay. So I'll thank you so much, everyone. I'll request everybody to now switch off your cameras once again. Thank you. I'd like to now invite Mr. Adnan Aliani, officer in charge, UNSCAP SSW of New Delhi office, to give the opening remarks. Thank you. So you have the floor. Thank you, Savera. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to the third regional online training course on e-commerce and digital marketing for women entrepreneurs. Thus far, we have trained more than 1,000 women entrepreneurs from South and Southwest Asia in e-commerce and digital marketing. At the outset, let me thank Dr. Ratnakar Adhikari uh, the executive director of the Enhanced Integrated Framework, EIF, Secretariat uh, at the World Trade Organization, and his colleague, uh, Ms. Hang Tran, uh, along with uh, other UN uh, colleagues from South and Southwest Asia, uh, and as well as the South Asia Women Development Forum and the South Asia Network on SDGs. Uh, for partnering with us in this training course. I would also like to welcome Ms. Anush Der Bogosian, WTO Gender Policy Advisor, and Dr. R Radhika Kumar, Advisor, Infrastructure Policy, Trade, Oceans, and Natural Resources Directorate of the Commonwealth Secretariat, London, as resource persons for this online training session. I am sure that the participants will benefit immensely from their global experiences. South Asia is recognized as a dynamic sub-region, uh, but its potential is undermined by, the, by gender inequality in all aspects of economic and social life. A recently released report on COVID-19 and the unpaid care economy in Asia and the Pacific states that, that the COVID-19 pandemic is jeopardizing hard-won gains in women's rights achieved over the, over the past several decades. However, COVID-19 pandemic also offers unique opportunities for the economic empowerment of women. The pandemic has accelerated the shift towards a more digital world, including the rapid growth of e-commerce. According to 
Shopify's data, e-commerce market in Asia is now worth around $832 billion. The growth of e-commerce has reduced the procedural burden of doing business. It has also increased the flexibility of doing business, resulting in greater opportunities for women entrepreneurs to expand their businesses and access global and regional markets, connect to new customers, and be part of a wider, uh, be part of wider supply chains. The pandemic has also highlighted the need to bridge the, dig the digital divide. Poorer and more disadvantaged groups have lost out because they do not have access to broadband internet and do not have the skills to benefit from the digital transformation. ESCAP is working on both aspects. To our initiative on the Asia Pacific Information Superhighway, we are working on expanding broadband access in the region and through our projects on e-governance, e-commerce and digital finance and fintech, we are enabling disadvantaged groups to benefit from the digital transformation of our societies. ESCAP through its project e-commerce capacity building for women-led MSMEs in South Asia in collaboration with EIF and other partners successfully launched the web portal www.unscap.vcellonline.org on 20th October 2020, almost a year ago. This website provides many tools, uh, including an online e-learning course on digital marketing and e-commerce, a manual or step-by-step -step guide uh, for beginners to start e-commerce businesses, and a link to e-commerce platform from where women entrepreneurs can connect with potential buyers to generate inquiries for trading their products and services. The web portal of www.vcellonline.org uh, is uh, also registering women entrepreneurs. In fact, this is a unique online platform which showcases the goods and services of only uh, women entrepreneurs of South Asia. We are happy to note that more than 250 women have joined this platform thus far. We are confident that our efforts will empower women in South and Southwest Asia and enable them to use new technologies to promote their businesses. Keeping this in view, this training is being organized to equip women entrepreneurs of South Asia to use digital and online platforms to expand their businesses, as well as creating awareness on the existing opportunities for, pro for promoting businesses through e-commerce along the along with networking with fellow entrepreneurs. We are exploring the possibility of organizing an in-person hands-on regional training workshop in the future, where we would, uh, we would bring some of you for uh, an advanced level training course. I hope you find this three-day training useful in expanding your businesses through e-commerce. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Adnan, sir. Uh, now I'd like to give the floor to Dr. Ratnakar, uh, Ratnakar Adhikari, Executive Director, EIF Geneva, to give his opening remarks. Sir, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Subira. Um, good afternoon, Asia, and good morning, Geneva. Uh, let me start by extending a warm welcome to all the participants on behalf of the Enhanced Integrated Framework, the EIF. This is the third online regional training offered by EIF UNSCAP project this year, after two successful trainings organized in April and June. As Andan has already mentioned so far, almost 10, uh, uh, 1,000 women entrepreneurs from South Asia region have benefited from the trainings. And 259 women entrepreneurs have registered in our e-commerce platform, Will We Sell Online platform. And today we expect about 370 participants to join. These are record numbers. I wish to congratulate and thank UNSCAP project team and the EI partners such as um, South Asia Women Development Forum, South Asia Watch on Trade Economics and Environment, 
South Asia uh, network on SDGs, and particularly the Ministry of Commerce of South Asian countries who have reached out to women entrepreneurs in their respective constituencies and facilitated their participation. I would like to extend my warmest welcome to participants from Cambodia who join us for the first time. I would like to make three points this afternoon. The first one is similar to what Adlan has mentioned, disproportionate burden faced by women entrepreneurs because of COVID-19. Women entrepreneurs have been hit harder than their male counterparts by the COVID-19 pandemic and its economic impact. First, they have suffered a much more um, impact on their business, it's much worse than their male counterparts. According to the World Bank Enterprise Survey, women-led businesses have generally seen larger declines in sales and profit during the COVID-19 pandemic. More importantly, they have been more likely to close down their businesses, at least temporarily, in 12 out of 18 countries, according to the survey. Second, they have benefited less than their male counterparts while receiving public benefits to counter the impact of the pandemic. Although the data for South Asian least developed countries, LDCs, is not available, a study conducted by uh, International Finance Corporation, IFC, in LDCs such as Ethiopia, shows that less than 1% of the women entrepreneurs received any type of government support during the first few months of the pandemic. Third, they have sacrificed more time than their male counterparts doing unpaid care work during the pandemic. For example, IFC Business uh, Future Survey found that the female business leaders were around 10 percentage point more likely than male business leaders to report that caring for children, homeschooling, and household chores were affecting their ability to focus on work. And my second point is, how can e-commerce help them? E-commerce is no magic wand, but it helps women entrepreneurs to revive their businesses to a great extent. First, women entrepreneurs whose businesses can be largely categorized as micro, small, and medium enterprises can use e-commerce to expand their customer base as well as businesses and reduce stage costs. That's more important. They can even access international market directly without having to rely on intermediaries as trade in parcel, as opposed to trade in containers is possible due to e-commerce. So women entrepreneurs with small, volume of businesses can also get connected to international market. Second, women entrepreneurs who face triple burden in the society can operate flexibly while doing business through e-commerce. They can even hide their identity if they so desire. Third, they can run their business in almost equal footing with their male counterparts if right conditions are made available to them. While access to and affordability of digital technology is an important condition, the necessary knowledge and skill to operate them beneficially is extremely important. This collaborative project between the EIF and UNSCAP aims to address the later, uh, the, the, the later aspect, which brings me to the third point. And this is about the power of partnership and collaboration. Within the EIF, the idea of supporting poor countries, especially to benefit from e-commerce was mooted in 2017. However, this would not have been possible without our collaboration with um, our partners. And these includes our partnership with the uh, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development on TAD, UNSCAP, with whom we are um, doing this today, International Trade Center, International Telecommunication Union, and Universal Postal Union, as well as our uh, partner, such as 
South Asia Women Development Forum, just to name a few. When it comes to skill development, this project, as well as the project being implemented in collaboration with ITU, stand out. Besides, EIF is currently partnering with several governments across LDCs, including Bhutan, Cambodia, Rwanda, and Senegal, to enhance their capacity to connect micro, small, and medium enterprises, women, youth, and more importantly, farmers to the global e-commerce market. A concrete example of how the EIF tries to harness the potential of partnership is the participation of women entrepreneurs from Cambodia in the event today. Though Cambodia is not a direct beneficiary of this project, their participation has been made possible due to online nature of training being organized as part of this project. And this was actually made possible due to the efforts of Ambassador of Cambodia to the WTO, His Excellency Long Kim Vichet, and EIF National Implementation Unit in Cambodia. I would like to thank them for their efforts. The participation of Cambodian participants promotes opportunity, not only for Cambodian women entrepreneurs to gain knowledge about e-commerce and online marketing, it also provides cross-regional sharing and networking opportunities for all the women entrepreneurs who are participating in this training. I would like to conclude now by once again recording my appreciation to UNSK, notably our colleagues Adnan, Rajan, Subera, Dipali, and others, as well as other partners for organizing these trainings. I wish all the participants a productive learning journey. I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, sir, for your valuable inputs. Uh, we shall now begin with session one, introduction to project e-commerce capacity building for women-led MSMEs in South Asia by Dr. Rajan Sudesh Krishnan. Dr. Rajan, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Savira. And uh, let me thank also Adnan Sao and Ratnakar Pai for their uh, their opening remarks. Uh, it has always been encouraging, and 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 thank you. And for all uh, others, I just take this opportunity to flag. Uh, though this project is for um, uh, South Asia women entrepreneurs, uh, but given uh, that we are connected with EIF. Uh, thankfully, EIF is taking us to the global reach, so they allowed us to make a presentation on this project in the WTO in Geneva, uh, and now we are seeing some of the Cambodian uh, uh, women entrepreneurs also being present here. So that uh, uh, that illustrates, and that gives a kind of a satisfaction uh, that we are uh, doing uh, a slightly better job, uh, uh, and that is why uh, uh, you know, there is a greater recognition by our partner like EIF uh, for uh, bringing more and more uh, people to, to this uh, program and we are happy uh, uh, to do that. Let me now uh, uh, go to my, uh, my presentation, uh, uh, which is just to give you an introduction uh, and to take you through some of uh, uh, the online courses which we have developed. Uh, so, uh, you know, the objective uh, prerequisites and about the project, etc., is what is the project, uh, uh, you know, the structure of the presentation is. Uh, already we have told you a number of times to change it as your first name, last name in the country, so that when you are raising your hand, you are asking some questions, we are able to uh, know your name and the country from where you belong to in order to successfully uh, address uh, your queries and take note of the fact that if you require uh, some kind of a help, uh, we can do it otherwise also. I am also taking this opportunity uh, to let you know uh, that though many of you who have registered have got, uh, would have given you a mobile number, but later in the day, uh, maybe you can give your mobile number and the name in the chat box because after every training, we create a WhatsApp group uh, to do some help for another 10, 15 days. So when 
uh, you would have registered you will find there would be certain problems certain challenges and uh, writing emails getting that remote guidance is difficult and therefore we want this uh, whatsapp group to be created for all these uh, 100 uh, women entrepreneurs who are participating today uh, uh, and and that will also create a network among yourselves and we'll also have a facebook group in which we will uh, connect you through and there are already 400 women entrepreneurs there so you would know them also uh, the schedule is this is for the three day training program you would have seen the program so i am not going to waste more time on it but the objective is to give you a hands-on exposure as to how you can connect with the e-commerce portal how you can do an online e-learning course uh, the module which we have developed and at any moment of time if you find a prop uh, any any uh, any problem you can raise your hand and we will be there to answer the questions so uh, the prerequisite uh, which is uh, uh, you know uh, important for this training program many of you have been told you require an identity proof issued by your national agency uh, because when you go into an e-commerce business you require your national identity uh, many of the countries in south asia they do not allow you to do any business without having a, a proper registration or a permit for your business and uh, but this is optional for for this website uh, to be to be connected uh, but definitely yes you will require an address proof to be given a documentary evidence um, better though optional that if you have many social media account because we'll be training you how you can use instagram how you can use uh, uh, linkedin how you can use facebook for promoting your business and therefore it is important that you uh, uh, you have these uh, social media account links uh, uh, you need to have your products, their brochures, their prices, because in these two year, two days training program, we are going to train you uh, about how you can upload your products uh, and your services and the details of your company. So these are a prerequisites for this training program, because otherwise, if you don't do it, you will not be in a position to fill all these forms. And, and if you are not, uh, then you would never be uh, able to do the e-commerce business. Now, uh, coming to what we have been doing already has been stated in the inaugural address by uh, uh, Dr. Atnakar and Mr. Atnan. Uh, we have done national inception workshops. We have launched this project in Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, and Nepal as well. We have had a high level forum on empowering women. Uh, that is where in October we launched the website and the training materials. So far, we have organized two training programs, uh, which is a regional one in April and June. And then we did one national in Pakistan, another one we are going to do it in India in November. Uh, already more than 100, 1,000 people in India as we have trained. Uh, these are some of the glimpses of uh, our earlier training programs. Uh, uh, the bottom left, uh, the, uh, this one is in Afghanistan, where we organized uh, in a hybrid mode. Uh, uh, this one in the top one is, uh, is Nepal, then this is in Bhutan and this was in Bangladesh, Dhaka. Uh, so, what I uh, am, am going to uh, to tell you about this project platform, and Suvira, may I request you to provide this link in the chat box so that yes, if sir, any participants uh, want to go there, they can. Sure. So, this is a project platform which we have developed, which is www.unscap.vcellonline.org. Uh, there are more than 4,000 hits uh, since its launch. Uh, many people have a lot of queries uh, and interest on this. And if you see, then you, you will find there are a uh, few things here. So the first one we have is the e-learning course. This course uh, is what I'm going to dwell upon today. I would like you to complete this course uh, by tonight uh, or by tomorrow. So that day after tomorrow, you are totally ready about it. Uh, um, some of you may have done because in the uh, in the invitation we said you may do it but i know all of you are very busy you may not have then we have a link for this e-commerce portal which uh, uh, deepali will take you through how to register how to upload your product how to put the details uh, there is a manual which very soon we will be publishing and then there are a lot of publications on e-commerce and other materials which you can see and so you can see we have Facebook pages, we have Facebook groups and Instagram page. And I would like you people to, to join these groups. And also we have a YouTube channel where we have. And if you scroll down this website, you will find 
there are many women entrepreneurs who have undergone our training and they have a small one one video one one minute video and clippings so if you are interested to advertise yourself self promote yourself i request you once we create that whatsapp group uh, or otherwise uh, you can mail your short video one one and a half minutes to suvira and then we'll try to upload it now uh, this is what i was talking about we have events and we have video channel there are many success stories of women entrepreneurs uh, from all around uh, south asia which would be very helpful and encouraging to you if you want to and we would be too happy to to have uh, you here to see you uh, coming here on this video channel now uh, we also have developed this as i was talking about we sell online uh, web portal this web portal is kind of an e-commerce web portal but this will only be gener uh, generating an inquiry so in this training module we will be also telling you how to generate inquiry how to look at what kind of inquiries have been uh, issued to you and how to then place the orders uh, and that will be the hands on training program and this training program we also have for you a uh, display of your products and services so we'll have a dedicated session there are already 259 women entrepreneurs who have registered uh, and uh, they will be working on it uh, we will be providing you this uh, two days intensely you will be uh, intensely you will be working on this piece online now these are some of the glimpses of april uh, and you can see some of the women who were displaying their products and then we have added it again in june where you would have seen there are women entrepreneurs from all over uh, south asia and southwest asia including iran and turkey they were displaying their products uh, now um, uh, coming to the e learning course uh, which is on e-commerce and digital marketing. This is self-paced online course. You can take this course in one day. You can take this course in one week. You can take this course in one month. But uh, one month is too far. Uh, there are only four modules. It will not take you more than two to three hours time. So you try to complete it uh, in one to two days because there will be a test. Uh, and these tests you can give as many number of times, but the questions will not be repeated. So every time you take a second test or a third time, a new question may come up. So, uh, and you have to qualify with 80% marks. And once you qualify, you will get this kind of a certificate uh, issued automatically by us. So uh, the link to register is given here uh, and you, it's already uh, put it in the chat box. So I would suggest you open that uh, and you go to that website. Now, once you go to that website, uh, you can start trying to register and to register uh, what you need to do is you need to go to this e-learning floor so you need to click there and once you click there then it, it will come here and if you are in the first timer here then you click on create new account and then you fill this form once you fill the form uh, you will come here and you will see this is a click on e-learning course icon uh, so uh, let me uh, do this with you and I would want you all to also go to this website. So, Suvira, have you um, uh, uh, posted this? Uh, yes, it's on the group chat. Okay. So, uh, may I request you all to go to this website. So, click here. And once you click, uh, you go to another website. Uh, sir, just to add, I will have to, I will have to uh, you know, stop and then share again. Right? Uh, okay. Uh, in the meantime, I'll request everybody to please go again and on the link and register. In case anyone fa facing any issues, you can raise your hand. Thank you. So this is the website. Can you see my website, everybody? So Vira, is it visible? Uh, yes, sir. Just increase the font size a bit. Yes, sir. That's good. Thank you. Everybody seeing? Please raise your hands. Show thumbs up. Okay. Uh, I presume I give you one minute time, everybody, to go there. And then uh, you click on this e-learning course. So please click here. So I will wait for uh, another 30 seconds and then 
I would request you all to click on this e-learning course. So please click now. So I'm clicking it. So now this web page will open. And if uh, I go to the course. Sir, sir just, uh, just if there's a query coming on the chat box. Uh, whoever is having a query on the chat box, uh, you can write it on the chat box in case we are un not being able to unmute you. I see the queries people writing on the chat box. So I request you to please write on the chat box once again. Uh, there's a query coming in. I can't listen because of the issue of network. Uh, yes, we'll be putting the recordings on the uh, presentations would all be there on the platform. So you could have a link to the platform. Thank you. Uh, yeah. And, and even this training course for these three days will be on the YouTube. So you can uh, later on YouTube or our website. So you can also visit there and uh, you can look at it. So uh, what I would suggest is you click on this uh, course, online e-course. So once you click, you will get this page. So I give you another half a minute to come here to this page. So you have uh, uh, this page from where we came to this e-learning and then from this e-learning, we came here. So from here, home page, you click on e-learning course. So say I click on e-learning course and from e-learning course, you go to this online e-learning course on digital marketing. Once you click, you reach this page. Everybody there? And then I suggest you go and say, create new account. Click it here. You will have a username. You will have a password. You have to give your email. Give the email again, first name. So fill this form. I would suggest whatever username you are using, and whatever password you are using, please note it down right now in your diary or somewhere. And use the same username and perhaps the password when you are going to create another account on WeSell Online for doing your business. So there are two login ID and two passwords you will require for two purposes. One for this training course, another to do the business. And it is better if you keep your username and password same for both. Because the training you will not be doing regularly, but your business you will be doing very regularly and frequently. And if you forget your password or you forget your user ID, then all that what you have fed in uh, will create a problem for you. So therefore, I would request you all to create and click uh, only, uh, yeah, you can use your past username and password. Yes, Shamin, you can. And if you have already undertaken the training course, then you don't need to do other in training course. Uh, why do you want to uh, unmute uh, Mr. Ali? You can uh, uh, post it here. What is your question? And I will answer you. If everybody is unmuted, uh, then we will be in the real bazaar. And the voices will echo. So we are seeing your questions. So if you have any question, I give you another two minutes. Please type down your questions and I will answer. Will I go to the website and click on e-learning? Yes. So you go to this website, click on e-learning. Once you click on e-learning, Sona phone is saying some of the women-led SMEs are going to join the workshop while they miss to register. Please kindly provide me a free access link. No, sorry, we cannot provide you the free access link because we need to have a database on uh, how uh, 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 we need to have a database, their name, their email address, etc. So those who have missed need to wait for the next term. Uh, you are asking for our reply, uh, but we cannot because we are mute. Uh, I am not asking you to reply uh, by joining a discussion. You can reply. I'm only asking you that if you have a question, you type in the chat box and I will answer. If you have 
something to comment upon, please type and we will reply. All a reply I am asking is if you are having only difficulty, you can do that. You can use the same official ID, but then uh, the purpose of this is to start business. And as an official uh, for the training, yes, you can. Uh, but be an official, you cannot do a business. I don't know. I mean, Shah uh, Bashwarat, uh, you will have to check. But yeah, you, you are free to use any uh, ID which you want, but kindly keep the same ID for this training program and the same ID for your business e-commerce platform. So, okay. Now, what I suggest is you can go here and you can register yourself. And once you create my new account, when you create the account, you will, you will get, uh, uh, you know, uh, a message and then you can uh, use uh, uh, for go to this training program and complete your training program. And I would suggest uh, after the training program today, please go to this website, go to the module, at least look for at least one module you should look so that when you come back tomorrow, if you have certain questions, some doubts, you are not able to register or certain problems, we'll open up the floor for open discussion and then you can raise those questions at that point. Uh, so, okay, uh, now let me go to my uh, presentation. So, I stop this uh, one and I will start doing the other one. Okay. So, from here now, uh, so here we were, right? And therefore, I would suggest you all please uh, register yourself. Uh, again, let me remind you, let me tell you, and let me tell you time and again, and Suira, please keep posting. There yes, are yes, two separate websites. One website is for training. So when you see online, this is a platform for training. When it comes for the business, when it will be coming for your e-commerce business, then you will not see www.unscap. UNSCAP will not be there. It will be only vcellonline.org. So please try to understand the difference between two different platforms. One platform is only for learning and the learning platform will have UNSCAP. But when it comes for doing a business, UNSCAP name will not be there. It will be purely www we sell online.org. So do not get confused. There are two platforms. There would be two different logins, but you can use the same login account and perhaps the same password to log in into both or maybe a different passwords depending on your choice. But it's always good to have the same password so that with the same login ID and password, you can, you can play around with both the websites. Otherwise, it would be difficult. Uh, okay, I have to train, then what was my password? Oh, I want to do the business, then what is my password? So please, again, time and again, I'm telling, there are two different websites. One website is for training, another website is for, uh, so let me, let me show it to you. So one website is this one. This is for e-learning. Another website is this one. This is for your business. You can have the same uh, login ID and password for both, but these two are two separate independent platforms. Okay, so now uh, the last. Uh, sir, one moment, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we have a query coming in on the chat box by two people saying they're not being able to register. Uh, Dayani and Harshana, uh, if you go on that link, click on this icon which says online e-learning course. Uh, no, okay. So, Veera, you yes, do sir. one thing. Uh, sure. Unmute first, Gayani. One moment, sir. Yes, yes Gayani, sir. Go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Gayani, uh, one second. 
uh, uh, Suvira also allow her to share her screen. I am stopping my screen. Gayani, can you share your screen? Uh, so I use the hand phone, sir. How I share? share. If you go down below, you will see there is a share screen. Do you uh, see? You should be able to share. I have made you the, the option, given you the option. Go ahead. So you, you, you go down the screen and you will see there is a green share screen. Do you see that? Not yet, sir. Yeah. Yeah, go to that website. So you are using mobile, right? I share the link, sir. Uh, I yes, ma'am. Ma ma you have to go click on this module, module one. Once you finish the module one, then you will be allowed to go on module two. Click on this online e-learning course. Yeah, you now need to complete module one. Once you finish module one, you will be automatically be allowed for module two. First, you click on module one. Can you click on module okay, one? Okay, sir. Yes, I, I click. Hmm? Enter. Click on enter. the enter. Okay, sir. And so this is how it opens. And you can click uh, on the slide and go. So what I see is you are registered to website. You have access to the training material. There's display module. Uh... Yeah, and you click. Keep clicking and you will go to the right to the next display. Or you say play and it will do. So this is objective of the module, another thing. Yes, uh, objective of modules. Yeah. So you have to click on, click the right arrow to the right hand side below. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yes, that's, yes, that's the contents there. Yeah. So this is how you have to do. You complete module one, then only you will be able to go to module two. Okay, so Suvira, go to the next uh, participant who put it. So disallow uh, uh, her screen sharing. Uh, yes, sir. I'm just seeing the name. One second. No, you, uh, Simheng, you can use iPhone to register and it will recognize. It's not that uh, we register only with Android. iPhone also can do that. Arshana? Arshana, you can speak yes, now. Sir. Go ahead. Yes, Go sir, ahead. yes, sir. I could are do you, now. Arshana, are you able to uh, uh, log yes, in? Sir. Yes, sir. I can log in right now after following your instructions. Your instructions. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. Thanks, yeah, uh, thank you. Then uh, there is one with an iPhone from Cambodia. Simhang, uh, give her to Singhang, uh, Suvira. Yes, sir. One moment. Uh, you may speak now. Simhang? Okay, yes. Can uh, you share your screen? Oh, share the screen. I use the phone. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It is possible even with the phone. It, uh, when I use Google to register it, it said uh, the web page is not available. No, no, no. Okay. Uh, can you click on the link on the chat box which Suvira has provided? Oh, yeah. Uh, I think it. We, I, I, I try to use in... Uh... No, no. Go to chat box. Uh, Suvira has again sent the link. Yeah. Click, click this link on your phone in the chat box. Okay. Okay. I see. I can do it now. Thank ah, very you. good. Yeah. Where are you? In Phnom Penh? Yeah, I'm in Phnom Penh. Okay. Very good. Don't go to the riverside. Be at home and work. Now it's COVID-19, we cannot go out. <laughs> well, that's very good. You should work from home. That is much better. Yeah. <laughs> Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So now let me share my screen again one more time. Okay. So. Uh, okay. Now, what is the next step? Uh, okay. After this. Uh, 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 what the next step is that 
uh, end of this year or early next year, we will be organizing the classroom training courses for those participants uh, from where the travel will be organized. Uh, we are going to do one uh, perhaps in November in Colombo in Sri Lanka this year. Let's see uh, if the travel is possible or not. If the travel is possible, then we will be funding your participation in that in-classroom training program. I'm saying not only you, uh, uh, the hundred who are uh, attending here, but also among those thousand who have attended our training program. But in that training program, we will also allow you to bring your products. Don't bring uh, 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 many, many, but little bit to display your products and show them. Perhaps you can sell it also to some of the other women entrepreneurs there. So we'll organize a kind of a short exhibitions also in that in-room classroom training program. But we will only allow those women entrepreneurs to travel. And I'm sorry. We cannot bear the cost of travel of Cambodia, but we can bear the cost of travel from the South Asia women entrepreneurs. Only those who have completed this online e-learning course on e-commerce, the website which I showed, and they have got the certificate. So you will have to upload the certificate in order, uh, in, in order to be eligible to go there. And then you will have to register on vSellOnline.com as entrepreneur, and you need to register. So, uh, so unless you meet these two criteria, we will not fund your participation. So please take care. And Suvira and Dipali, I am requesting you in that WhatsApp group and to the other uh, ladies who thousand, those who have attended, uh, uh, we can discuss after this training program. We'll send one general mail saying that now we are trying to organize a regional classroom training program for those women entrepreneurs who would have completed this online e-learning course, get a certificate, and those who have registered on WeSell Online as entrepreneur and have uploaded their product. And after that, uh, we will create a Google platform where they will be filling the form and uploading these two certificates. And once they're done, then we'll scrutinize and we'll allow their travel. So. Uh, the other thing which uh, I uh, would bring to your attention uh, is also that we are doing a survey on impact of COVID-19 on South Asian women entrepreneurs. And this survey is a form, will form a part of a study which we are doing and it will, uh, it will bring out uh, what in the South Asian context women entrepreneurs feel uh, in terms of their business. Has it increased? Has it declined? What are the challenges they are facing? What are the problems we are, they are facing? So I am requesting you uh, to take some time to fill this survey. Uh, uh, Suvira, we'll have some break sometime, right, in the program. Suvira? Yes, sir. we have a Q&A session and uh, there I can again share the survey link with everybody. Yes, everybody so what can. we can do is we can give them 15 minutes time slot somewhere where we mm -hmm. put this uh, web link and ask them to, to complete the survey. Sure, sir. I'll do that. Okay. Yeah. So thank you all, everybody. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions or something, uh, you can ask now, or I will be there with you for another uh, two days. You can always ask me questions. But now, uh, uh, so we are uh, okay. So now I'm, I'm stopping. And uh, if anybody has a question, please raise your hand. We will unmute you, and you can ask the question, and uh, we'll try to answer. Anybody has any question, please raise your hand. Okay, so I see no, uh, perfectly fine. Thank you very much. So Vira, over uh, to you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, we'll now begin with session two, introduction on e-commerce and digital marketing and linking to social media platforms by Ms. Dipali. Dipali ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you, Suvira. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, am I the host now? Can I share my screen? Yeah, I'll share my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay. 
Uh, so this is uh, one of the introductory session, uh, which is very important because uh, this covers uh, introduction to e-commerce, digital marketing, and linking to social media platforms. So the presentation structure goes like this. First, we have information about e-commerce, then uh, digital marketing uh, introduction. Then uh, we'll create a Facebook and Instagram account because very necessary now. Uh, if you have a business, it's uh, mandatory to have a Facebook account now to promote your business. So let us understand what is e-commerce. E-commerce is the shortened version of electronic commerce. Basically, it involves buying and selling online and this is done electronically. So what are the digital platforms available online like Google, uh, the e-commerce shop, Facebook store, all these places if we start selling and buying online uh, then it is called as electronic commerce and it includes the selecting the products and uh, doing the payment and this payment is done through uh, online only and uh, which is facilitated by payment gateways so payment gateways are the systems which help uh, to accept credit card debit card net banking and sell and buy online it also includes transactions such as transfer of money funds and data through internet so even buying of software and downloading antivirus software like norton this activity also is e-commerce so how women entrepreneurs can uh, get benefited by e-commerce uh, in the inaugural, uh, both our guests, uh, both our speakers, uh, Mr. Ratnagar Adhikari and uh, both of them were saying that uh, e-commerce has helped the women entrepreneurs a lot because uh, in this situation, especially during the pandemic, uh, we are facing a lot of problems to go to the market, open the shops and sell online, uh, sell offline and also the buyers are forced to buy online. So in such situation and even otherwise, uh, if we have our e-commerce stores, we can grow and scale up our business. And also it gives you a lot of flexibility because uh, your business will even run from your smartphone and uh, from your home, you can just uh, list your products, take the order on WhatsApp or on Facebook or on your own store and uh, definitely uh, you can uh, grow your business. And there are no uh, uh, borders for e-commerce because it's not required to only sell locally. Uh, so e-commerce, uh, with the help of e-commerce, you can be part of wider supply chain across the border, across the international borders. You can definitely uh, find your buyers and uh, start selling online. And uh, this is uh, very important that uh, this gives you opportunity to showcase your niche business and uh, it can be very unique and maybe locally you do not have any uh, requirement for or you do, may not have demand but internationally you can get a lot of uh, demand from uh, for your business if it is niche and unique products so definitely women entrepreneurs get benefited with e-commerce so what are the major types of uh, e-commerce B2B and B2C are the main types and there are many, but I'm just uh, giving a few examples. B2B is generally business to business. Suppose a distributor is selling to dealer and then he is selling to a business. So such uh, transaction which happens between two businesses is called as B2B. B2C is business to consumer. So suppose any business, suppose a uh, textile manufacturing company selling textiles, selling apparels to a woman who is a consumer, then it can be called as B2C. And there are other types of e-commerce like B2G where businesses are paying taxes online to the government, it can be B2G. C2C is consumer to consumer. Suppose I am selling my used uh, bicycle online to other consumer. So I am also a consumer, so it can be C to C, consumer to consumer. And then uh, all the transaction happening through mobile commerce is called as M-commerce. That is also a major type of e-commerce because 
now mobile is the most popular device which is used so widely so how to get started you need to plan the e-commerce and then you need to select whether you will sell on your own website or you will sell on the marketplaces like amazon ebay etc so you have to define the strategy like you need to find where your buyers are residing whether they are international or local depending on their availability of the buyers you can definitely uh, define the strategy and then you need to choose your online channels it can be only website it can be both online website and marketplace it can be your social media channel and it can be whatsapp so such channels you have to categorize and definitely uh, streamline and then uh, you need to do the online marketing online marketing is very very important because unless you do digital marketing or online marketing you will not find the buyers so buyers will not be uh, knowing uh, that you have such activity online so you need to do online marketing and then you need to promote and present your product so well that the customers get attracted and buy online you also should know what are the legal aspects like whether uh, like some of the explosives we cannot sell online even live animals uh, we cannot sell online such legal aspects you should know so that you will not violate any rules of online sell and uh, you need to have the shipping gateway and the payment gateways in place because if you get the order you need to deliver it so the delivery uh, tie up has to be done with the shipping uh, payment shipping gateways and also you need to accept the payments through net banking credit card debit card so for that you need to have uh, payment gateways and after sales and before sales also many times uh, people uh, first time buyers especially they need to call they need to find out whether this business is really good or not just to just to build the trust the uh, customer care is very important uh, you need to talk to them and then once the order is placed uh, regarding the shipping regarding payment and many other things packaging this that you may get customer care calls so you need to have a customer care team in place so what are the essentials to start e-commerce business uh, because we are accepting online payment we need a bank account definitely we cannot accept physical cash we need to have a very good business name which will be building as a brand and we have to prepare a business plan for business plan uh, there should be uh, proper projections and strategies defined so that we can uh, implement it through e-commerce and uh, we need necessary permits for the business like uh, uh, whether we can uh, deliver products without taxation and with taxation all these things we should know then we need to define the products or the service and the pricing for the same after that we need to make a proper product catalog pricing catalog and then we need to promote it and uh, once we get the order we need to supply it so we need to maintain the proper stock and inventory for the same so what is the difference between the marketplace and your own website marketplace is the place where you can list free but it is a huge uh, marketplace so you have many retailers and suppliers are, are your competitors and uh, all the marketing is done by the admin like amazon if you are selling amazon is doing all the marketing or like they are coming with the big bullion sale and all that so these things are done by them and uh, you are part of uh, their network and uh, but in your website if you are selling then you need to take care of the marketing so the advantage of selling on marketplace is uh, marketing is done for you and uh, it is very easy for you and uh, just uh, you need to know how to upload the products and uh, the basic uh, information about listing the products so that you can start selling online in the website initially you need to invest more because you need to uh, also uh, have a proper e-commerce site and also 
you need to promote your brand. In marketplace, the disadvantages because it is a network of it is a, a platform where numerous retailers and sellers are available. So individual brand building is not possible. The brand built is of net of marketplace and not of your uh, individual vendor. So uh, you will not get that exposure. And even the product is delivered, it is delivered by Amazon. So name of Amazon is there, supplier name is there, but it is not given much importance and the brand is not built. However, in website, it is always uh, very important that you, you get the visibility for your brand. So I suggest to go for a website if you have the budget and if you think that you can take care of marketing and you have team to do digital marketing and build your brand. Selling on marketplaces does not involve require uh, more efforts in designing and development front because uh, it has a fixed kind of template and uh, store structure where you can just go and upload your products and start selling online. Uh, whereas uh, our own uh, e-commerce site, we need a uh, lot of uh, online and uh, digital marketing efforts and it, it requires uh, more time and money also to get that kind of uh, returns. Due to increased number of sellers on online platforms, strong competition exists and uh, it does not provide the opportunity for branding. However, in uh, your own e-commerce portal, it requires a lot of investment in marketing, but once you build the trust, once you start getting the orders, it is beneficial because you are saving on the marketplace commission also. You need not pay Amazon or eBay, or you are getting the whole amount directly to your account and the middle person is uh, eliminated in case of your own website. So what are the challenges we face for e-commerce? Uh, it is mainly security of financial information because uh, we are entering our credit card, debit card number and our PIN, everything online, sometimes hacking, a malware attack, a cyber crimes happen and uh, there is theft of security information. So that is one major challenge and many times people are scared to buy online because they think that their uh, information may get stolen, their card may get stolen and they may lose money. So security is the major challenge. Then also privacy of consumer data. Because consumers are giving their name, address, email, everything and uh, they want their data to be private uh, because it should not be sold to any advertisement company and uh, they should not get uh, regular advertising emails and all that so privacy of customer data is very important also in e-commerce you physically cannot touch suppose you are buying a fabric you cannot touch and feel and understand how good it is and whether it's silk or not such things are available only for physical shops so that's the major challenge to give the actual feel and uh, uh, touch to the customer and there is a lot of information available on each and every product. Suppose you go online and say, I want to buy a uh, electric cooker and uh, you will see thousands of brands and so many people are writing reviews and so much of information. So it is definitely con uh, confusing the consumer. So uh, buyers are uh, getting a lot of access to the information. That is also one of the challenge to understand which is good, which is bad because many times the brands themselves write good about them and then getting the real reviews. In e-commerce, building the trust with the consumers generally take longer. Say your consumer is there online, but they can't see you, they can't visit your store. So they take time to build a trust because they, there is no physical connect. So that uh, is one of the challenge. And there can be many technical glitches. Sometimes there is power loss, data loss, attacks, cyber crime attacks or malware attacks. So the business, the website may go down and when there is a peak business, 
there can be many visitors which may make the website go down crash down so such challenges are technical challenges which are bound to happen because of technology based platform and uh, also it requires frequent software and web application updates because um, uh, many times the uh, technology changes so fast that every now and then you need to upgrade your system your os your antiviruses your server all those things are non stop in upgradation so when we compare the traditional commerce with e-commerce there are some terms which are like traditionally we used to say retailing now we say e-tailing and we used to have brand showrooms and now we have websites we uh, we used to source the product and manufacture from manufacturer and uh, uh, many times uh, we used to hold the stock but now e-commerce does not require to hold the stock because you can have a drop shipping model means whenever the order comes you can ask the a stock is to deliver the order so those uh, traditional uh, businesses have changed and uh, there we used to have merchandising but now we have catalog or listings and then uh, inventory management is common because uh, it uh, though it is online physically we need to maintain the inventory uh, and uh, stocks and uh, in the traditional business we used to have traditional marketing like tv print ads uh, big big hoardings billboards etc but uh, now that has been replaced with digital marketing which is much more effective and uh, which gives very uh, very cost effective and uh, which gives high return on investment because it uses google ads email marketing social media ads very very effectively so in traditional commerce the order processing used to happen at the shop counter but now we are uh, uh, everything is happening uh, at the back end of the e-commerce portal like order packaging processing and, and uh, it is delivered from the warehouse so these all things are uh, generally managed through the e-commerce portals and uh, in both the cases we have customer care and customer service which is very important so what are the basic requirements to become a seller on e-commerce you should have pan uh, that is your account number a uh, permanent account number which is given by the government income tax department and uh, gst and bank account gst i am telling only for india and uh, it depends on your country say cambodia must be having some kind of taxation registration that is very important because any if you are doing offline business or online business the taxes will be the same so you need to have the, your taxation registration and definitely it's online business so you need a good internet connection and you your product should be of good quality select the right product right time and uh, see that the price is very competitive and uh, you do survey because uh, all the information is available online uh, studying your partner uh, studying your competition and uh, uh, the prices online is very uh, easy and you can do that and comparatively you can have your prices very very attractive you need a printer for printing your shipping labels invoices and courier addresses etc you need a computer and laptop because it's all digital and packaging material so why it is important to choose the right e-commerce portal so many times you go on marketplace you get listed suppose you are selling laptops and you register to amazon you will be there like 30000 people are selling laptops you will be there on 48th or 50th page of amazon for a laptop listing so you will not get any kind of business so you need to know ki how i should market laptops and uh, for that you need to choose the right e-commerce store or have your own e-commerce portal and uh, it should match your product and type suppose you are selling fabric items 
and uh, you try to go to chroma digital or something they don't allow you to sell fabric items so you need to choose your website according to your product say mintra flipkart uh, amazon these all portals are selling uh, apparels so for apparels and fabric you need to register to those portals and there are special portals only for handicraft and uh, there is a uh, women own portals also like we sell online so these are uh, portals are promoting women entrepreneurship so choose your efforts widely uh, wisely because you just uh, put somewhere lot of efforts and if you don't get return it is waste of time and energy for you then you need to identify what is the right website so for that i just told you like search for the e-commerce website and search uh, what all products they are selling you just search your competitors are listed on which portals check on the price range of the products sold on the chosen website and find out the target market of the e-commerce website so that you can ensure that the product matches with the market requirements so the business process of e-commerce will involve like sourcing step one is you need to source from the very good source which is of good quality and price because e-commerce is very competitive and uh, you are online means you are global you are competing with all the players who are available online it's not like traditional commerce where if you open a shop on particular place in a town you are competing only on those um, uh, shopkeepers who are available on that place on uh, in that town but e-commerce you are globally competing so your prices should be competitive so your sourcing should be very very intelligent so that you can save on good margins and sell and earn good profits take pictures of the product and upload them on the website along with product description here the picture should be very attractive it cannot be haphazard and uh, disproportionate and blur so uh, you will not get any uh, business out of it and uh, step 3 is uh, once you have uh, live websites uh, and products are live you need to uh, fulfill the orders with the help of packaging and shipping so uh, see that you have network of shipping all over uh, your country or internationally and uh, study the shipping gateway properly uh, charge the shipping charges appropriately so that you will get good revenue so here are some of the product photography tips uh, see online you are preparing catalog and uh, the consumer is only able to see uh the photograph they are not able to come to your shop and check the product physically or touch and feel uh, so you need to give the presentation of your product very nicely with the proper photography and it should be excellent resolution and quality uh, if you are using uh, phones you can use a high resolution photographs uh, like using iphone and all and then you should choose sufficient lighting uh, or white background uh, so that the product quality is images is good and uh, it should be like a 3d effect you can uh, if you want to make a <coughs> 3d product the paper can be folded against the wall uh, so that both the side you can have the uh, this one a background and then you can take the photograph so these are the some of the examples like uh, suppose for a watch how you can take from front from side uh, from the back of it and also with the open uh, 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 watch photo so that people will come to know and also you can uh, for textile uh, so you can see how the direct light or how the side light makes difference so you should see that Uh, the color of the textile should uh, the match with the photo because many times many phones show different different colors and that should not get uh, uh, 
converted into returns because uh, many times people say that you have listed red but i have issued orange so i am returning it so that should not be the case and then use proper software tools like uh, ms paint adobe photoshop here you can edit it and uh, see that the proper background is chosen crop it you can also add some filters to beautify it so that it looks very good and then you can uh, choose the standard product size as uh, 201 pixels that should be the width and height should be 318 this is the standardization given by internet standards so that will generally show your picture appropriate and uh, mind it that when you change the size uh, it should uh, be selected as constrained proportion means it should be changed proportionately suppose sometimes people only change the width and the uh, uh, image looks like a stretched one and uh, it doesn't give proper impact and it, it looks really horrible uh, I at least uh, always see that uh, all the images are proportionate After that, you need to write the proper product description. So product description should be like um, product title, product price and specification like uh, it, its uh, size and all like length, width and height and uh, what material is used. Suppose it's a dress material, then you need to give a size guide. Uh, sorry, if it is a ready-made dress, you need to give a size guide. For uh, material, you need not give the size guide. So these all things are very important because people are only seeing the description and photograph and buying. So you make a point that you make them understand each and everything. Many times giving a video or a recording of your video shoot of your product is important because it gives complete idea to the customer how the product looks and uh, suppose it's a uh, uh, apparel uh, model can wear it and uh, do a flat work and you can put that video that will give a very very uh, good impact and uh, which will uh, result into higher sales also care instructions like washing care and uh, how to handle it all those things you need to mention So after that you need to mention the product code uh, because e-commerce you need to mention uh, codes to uh, maintain the inventory. Uh, you are maintaining the inventory also online because whenever you sell offline you will enter it on your portal so that you will exactly get the idea how many are available. Also it will update automatically on the e-commerce portal whether the product is there in the stock or not. So it is mention in the form of SKU that is S for stock keeping unit and uh, it is uh, above you can see that KR5325 that number is SKU in the barcode and uh, generally you have to give it according to your color of the sari or dress or whatever so here I give an example that if sari is green in color and it is first sari which is green in color then you can give like sari 001 hyphen g like that you can go on giving the codes to the uh, e-commerce products which will help you to identify the product and also to maintain the stock so what are online precautions we need to take as a seller you should be very very careful about handling the card payments and cash transfers of your customers anyway you are you should not accept directly on your site if you if a customer says that i'm unable to pay online why don't you take my card number and charge that is a risky affair always you ask them to enter on their own and that too through secured uh, payment gateway and uh, for that you should have cc avenue paypal ebs all this secure payment gateway integration done for your website so that there should not be any frauds and uh, there can be many frauds like nowadays many times somebody calls me and says give me otp i am paying you thousand rupees for uh, buying uh, for flower delivery and uh, mind it that if anybody is paying us uh, they don't need any otp 
but if we are paying then we need to do otp so this is cheating they ask otp and then immediately the payment gets deducted from our mobile wallet so in india we have many popular mobile wallets like g pay google pay phone pay paytm uh, even bhim and all other apps we are using so these are uh, giving a lot of options to the cyber criminals to ask for otp and uh, steal the money from other mobile wallets so we need to be aware and uh, about the cyber crimes for that we need to choose a secure e-commerce platform and uh, it should always have ssl that is secure socket layer it's a certificate which comes uh, through the hosting company and they install it then only the website looks like https instead of http so whenever you are buying or selling online you see that you are using https and not using http which uh, shows as non secure or prone for cyber attacks don't use uh, don't store sensitive user data suppose you have uh, 2000 customers and you are saving all their name address email phone credit card details everything online and suppose your website gets hacked then the data can get be stolen and then it can uh, uh, create lot of problems because it can steal customers money also and credit card information so such things are very important that you should not store in a sensitive user data and you should ask your users to use strong password strong password means combination of capital letter special character and numbers so it should be like one capital letter and the strong character like dollar or hash these symbols you should use with the combination of numbers alphanumeric password is very strong and always back up your systems and database so if the data is lost also because of cyber attack or anything you will always have backup and you can uh, start your system again so what is shopping cart whenever somebody is buying online they will add the product and price uh, of the product and uh, they will add the quantity and then uh, the taxes and shipping cost and fee for the shipping everything is added and there you have sometimes option of adding discount code so if you add the discount code uh the price gets reduced and then there is a link to pay online which will be through the payment gateway so this all facility is available in shopping cart so this is a example and uh, this is shopping cart flow uh first it comes from uh first we add to the shopping cart then we sign up to the website and when we click on the checkout it adds address payment order gets created and then it checks in the inventory if it is available shipping is uh, dependent on the distance and the weight of the product and accordingly the shipping charges are calculated and added to the price list and the order is completed and shipped and then if we have any returns and exchanges that will happen only after fulfillment of the order so what is payment gateway payment gateway is the system which accepts the payment and it is a middle uh, where where it stands in between the consumer and the seller and the consumer information of uh, payment like credit card debit card net banking everything is accepted at the payment gateway and then the payment gateway deals with the banks and if there are any charges uh, they uh, they definitely cut it and for all the transaction there will be some transaction commission so generally for credit cards uh, 0.5 to 3% they charge depending on Uh, the country and type of card and also for net banking there will be charges uh, when i started e-commerce in the year 2000 the charges were very high i used to pay 
up to 12% for online payment gateway CC now, then it reduced to 7, then 4, then 3, and now it has come down uh, to 1.5 and 0.5%. So now it has become very competitive and the payment gateway charges are very reasonable. So these are some of the payment gateways like PayPal, CC Avenue, PayU Money, EBS, Pay Simple, Rupay, and then mobile wallets like Amazon Pay, Google Pay, Phone Pay, Paytm, etc. Shipping you can do on your own. So there are the shipping options like uh, ship yourself uh, through warehouse, through drop shipping, and uh, shipping charge calculator. Uh, will be available which will tell you like uh, how much it is charging based on the location and the uh, and the uh, uh, weight of the product and uh, there are many third party shipping options so in legal guide of e-commerce you should know like what should be the terms and conditions mentioned on your site because many times you need to secure yourself uh, uh, if there are refunds, whether you will refund the shipping charges or not, this term you need to mention. Uh, if the product is damaged and it is returned and it's damaged by the customer, what should be your policy? All these things you need to mention and also about the privacy policy, refund policy. Uh, it is very important because many customers are so uh, so aware and uh, particular that they don't place the order on websites which are not mentioned any privacy policy because they think that their data may get stolen. So you need to mention the privacy policy and also disclaimers and limitation of liability. <coughs> Sorry. Also about user rights and responsibilities. So even terms will have terms of payment, terms of delivery, terms of shipping like uh, we deliver embroidered saris and uh, we take at least 15 days to one month time. So our term for uh, delivery and shipping is minimum one month time. So this you have to mention in advance so that the customer will not get confused and uh, there won't be any cancellation and refunds of orders and also refund related you should be particular and you should mention all the possibilities like um, uh, we uh, we have mentioned on our flower delivery website that if the customer rejects the order it is uh, not refundable because the flowers cannot be returned uh, but in case the sender tells us in advance that cancel order then we can give 100% refund. So such policies and terms and conditions you need to mention. Also terms of use of the website like you cannot copy the photographs uh, because many times uh, the photos get copied and uh, used for multiple purposes. So those are terms you need to mention on your website. So I will uh, move ahead because I need more time for digital marketing also. Uh, this PPT will be available online and uh, if you have any questions, you can always uh, ask me. I will share my email ID also in the end so that you can also email me your questions. So what are the risks are there in e-commerce, mainly cyber security? And the solution is like use of strong softwares, antivirus software, server passwords, strong uh, SSL that is secure socket layer software which I told already. And then we should have reliable operating systems, application programming interfaces and uh, servers so that we have proper uh, e-commerce and uh, there won't be any additional risk and uh, for misuse of credit card information we need to uh, have a secure payment gateway which will be secured through the ssls and uh, various servers and uh, uh, cyber security softwares and also there will be uh, intellectual property issues like uh, as i told before like our embroidery photographs and sari photographs used to get copied so what we have done is 
we have used technical protection services tps like trademark registration patenting copyright information we should put it on your website so that we can have digital intellectual property so with this uh, all the uh, basics of e-commerce are covered uh, we saw what are the risks what are the precautions we need to care, take care how to do the product catalog product photography and many other things so uh, if you uh, are keen on starting e-commerce you can start with vsaleonline.org in my next session i'll be covering uh, basics of uh, selling on vsaleonline.org and uh, we'll be creating your profile so you can register with the portal and uh, also we'll uh, teach you how to upload your product and services and then uh, we are doing digital marketing for those so definitely you will start generating leads so it will develop through your network so what is digital marketing uh, it is very important that we should market our products and service through traditional e-commerce and uh, for that uh, we, we should know basics of digital marketing and uh, Digital marketing uh, is definitely dependent on internet because it is done digitally. It is done through uh, desktops or mobile devices. It is done through social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Pinterest, etc. And uh, it uses search engines. So what are the search engines? Search engines are like Google, Yahoo, Bing, Ask, where people are searching for certain information and uh, they from there they want to find the information so we need to get found in search engines to reach our targeted customer and it is the best way of growing our business digital marketing and uh, uh, it is very important to build your brand and uh, reach the right customer reach the targeted customer so that uh, we'll get high return on investment so what are digital marketing it is uh, uh, we'll understand now one by one how to create even social media pages in facebook business page instagram business profile whatsapp business profile and a very important core of digital marketing is content creation and photography because without that we cannot engage the customer so there are some key components of digital marketing that is SEO, SEM, SMO, SMM, email marketing and content marketing. So we will see one by one what is SEO that is search engine optimization. Search engine is the web based software I, I told you before like Google where people are searching for data so users can find the information and uh, when we need to get ranking in Google, we do SEO. So SEO stands for search engine optimization and it's the process of getting traffic from the free organic editorial or natural search results in the search engine. So there are two types of SEO. On page optimization means we do changes in the website and off page optimization means we do the link building activities or directory submission activities which is off page like our website is ready but we are not doing changes on the website we are promoting it off page and we are promoting by building links by writing articles by submitting it to forums to the blogs uh, by uh, linking it to various directories so such activities are off page optimization so what is SEM? Suppose uh, you are doing SEO, search engine optimization, but uh, your ranking has not come in Google. Generally, it takes two to three months to get ranking in Google. So what we do is SEM, search engine marketing. So this is done through PPC campaign. PPC stands for pay per click, where we are paying the Google for clicks. Uh, so it can depend on the basis of keyword suppose the keyword is uh, buy apparel from Bhutan so Bhutan is a larger um, territory and uh, apparel is very 
बिग की वर्ड सो डेफिनेटली दिस की वर्ड में कॉस्ट फिफ्टी रुपीज और से टू डॉलर्स पर क्लिक बट एट द सेम टाइम इफ वी से बाय सिल्क स्कॉर्फ फ्रॉम थिम्पू सो हियर वी आर सिलेक्टिंग द प्रॉपर सिटी एंड मोर निच प्रोडक्ट लाइक सिल्क स्कॉर्फ सो वी आर रिड्यूसिंग द कॉम्पिटिशन एंड वी आर रिड्यूसिंग द इवन द रीच द सर्च वॉल्यूम so that may cost you say फिफ्टी cents so depending on the competition and depending on how big the search volume is uh, the PPC campaign the pay per click cost is defined and uh, then we need to have good strategy to get more clicks and uh, for that we need to run the PPC campaigns and uh, in this case we get the ads displayed on the top and right of the search engine uh, because um, it is shown not in the green listing but in the uh, side of the main listing main listing is appearing through the search engine optimization and the side and top is appearing through the ppc campaigns so what is smm social media marketing it refers to the business activity on social media which contributes to marketing objectives such as brand awareness website traffic customer acquisition so social media marketing you will do through various social medias and it depends on how many social medias you create uh, and how many you post on a regular basis and also share with your friends and followers by tagging and by posting it on different groups so there are popular social medias like facebook instagram twitter linkedin pinterest so these all medias even youtube channel these all medias are very important to reach the targeted customers and these all medias can be used through organic also and through paid also so you have to have a proper strategy and for that you should have good content writer who will write good content about you good photographer who will take nice pictures about your products then you write nice description and every time just don't have self speech on your uh, social media you can also engage the customer by giving some additional information like uh, we sell flowers and uh, we deliver flowers all over india so our sales pitch will not be every time like buy flowers online we deliver flowers online instead of that uh, we write information about like how to take care of roses then uh, what should be written in a birthday card then uh, birthday gift ideas birthday party ideas so such posts are useful and engaging for the customer so customer will like your page and then you can sell your products to them by giving a sales pitch once a while uh, but every time if you start posting about selling or uh, forcing them to buy for your product then they will not like your page they will stop following you so the social media content is the heart of the social media and uh, it the when your audience share your content they will become our channel of our distribution and uh, their followers their friends will come to know that they have shared your product and uh, they will also promote it digital marketing is very important because it is more advantageous in terms of measurement traditional marketing say we give newspaper ad but we cannot measure how many people have read that newspaper ad and also we cannot understand like suppose we have put say 100 dollars for the advertisement how much return we have got but in digital marketing even in social media ads or uh, ppc ads will immediately understand like how many people have viewed that ad and what exactly action they have taken so cpc that is cost per click also we understand and uh, those all measurements can be done through various tools those are giving us return on investment details roi tools like google analytics google webmaster tools 
then basic Google search, Google AdWords, social media monitoring tools, sentiment analysis tools, etc. These are tools are available online. And uh, if you want to learn this, there are digital marketing classes available. You can definitely um, go and uh, online also. There are very low cost classes available. You can attend those and take your decision on which tool to use and how to use it. So how social media helps e-commerce business? It is a very powerful tool because it connects thousands of people and uh, these people are talking about your product and if they recommend your product then their friends are bound to buy these because many times a peer recommendation is very important like people read the reviews and ratings given by other people and then only buy the product so uh, social media plays very important role because here you will understand what uh, people are talking about and there are very uh, high profile people who have more followers and who are popular on uh, social media channels they are called as influencers and uh, with the help of influ influencers also products can be promoted so if an influencer tells that this product this cosmetic is very good and i have become fair my skin is glowing because of this so uh, it gives um, a lot of uh, importance because there are many followers for that particular influencer so they will try to uh, buy through that so facebook uh, uh, is the one of the main social media platform which will be using through facebook marketplace or facebook shop Facebook shop allows you to sell online, but marketplace, you can list your product, but you cannot uh, sell there. So uh, we'll uh, just see how to create Facebook account and uh, Facebook marketplace gives the buyer information about products, but uh, you cannot sell it, but it is very important for local market because you can list your product and uh, there will be a uh, lot of local people who will show interest in it so these are very popular channels so to create a facebook account first you go to facebook.com and enter your name and mobile number phone number uh, and password so you can select the password uh, strong password as per uh, criteria defined by me and uh, you can check on the, in, uh, give your date of birth and gender and then you can check OTP which is received on your phone number or email. After that you confirm that OTP that code you received you need to enter and then your Facebook account will get created. So the screen looks like this. This is the sign up. In Facebook business page, you need to create uh, a business page which is like a mini website. So it will have a cover page and uh, you can uh, do that through going through your Facebook account. First log into your Facebook account. Then you click on this place here on the top you have plus symbol. Once you click on plus symbol, you will get a create new page menu after that it looks like this so you need to enter the business information like name of the business business category and then choose this cover page here there is a cover page here you can enter it and then enter all the information what they are asking like category etc description upload the profile picture here we uploaded the profile picture and cover photo now we have very short time otherwise physically practically i would have shown each and every step how to create it and you enter your logo also as your profile picture because it is your business page your logo is very important it is used for brand building so that's it and uh, you can also list to the 
uh, Facebook uh, marketplace so that people will come to your website and from there they can buy. So you can give link of WhatsApp also. To create Instagram account, first you need to uh, download the Instagram app because Instagram works on mobile because they want it. Uh, it is encouraging the user to post via phones because phones are very handy and phones are used for recording short videos and uh, photographs, not like laptops. So and phones are carried everywhere. So uh, mainly for travel and other purposes, Instagram is promoting posting via phones. So though it is possible to download in desktop and do it, Instagram is generally uh, used through the phone. So sign up with the email and phone number, then create new account and uh, click on that next. So your email address or your phone number will receive a confirmation code. And uh, with that, your Instagram account will get created. You can also tap login with Facebook. So even Instagram and Facebook are both are belonging to one company. So postings are also possible either way, like you can post it uh, through Facebook to Instagram or Instagram to Facebook. So you can register and create your account. So go to Instagram.com, same steps which I mentioned now. If you register with an email, you click on sign up. And uh, if you register with Facebook, you will prompt it to log into your Facebook account and you can sign up your email. So email ID will get the code and if you forget the password also, you can enter it by forgot password. So why Instagram business account is necessary is because it allows insights also like how many users are visiting, how much time they are spending and all that you will get information and which will definitely help to boost your business. So these are the steps. Create Instagram account, give the mobile number and then enter the confirmation code. And then this is the Instagram business account. Navigate to your Instagram profile and bottom right corner on the app, you will get the option to create the business account. So with the settings, you can also select switch to professional account for your personal account. Swipe through the pictures of professional account and select continue and select the category of your brand. Select business as your account type. Review the contact information here. You have to select business. Review the contact information. Click on your existing Facebook business page to your Instagram account. You can use the same or you can create a new Facebook page and complete the coding process with all the necessary information. So now with this, you will have a Instagram account. So thank you. And uh, this is our email ID info at vcellonline.org, contact at vcellonline.org and also you can contact Suvira at her un.org ID. So I am open for questions and queries or you can also email me. Thank you. Thank you so much ma'am for your valuable session. Anyone has any question, we'll open the uh, floor for two minutes before we begin for the next session. Anyone has any questions, uh, you can raise your hand or you can even uh, put it on the chat box. Uh, Ma'am, we have a question coming on the chat screen. Uh, we can convert a personal Insta into business accounts? Yeah, there is option, you can convert it. Uh, Ma'am, can you close your screen so I can see uh, who all have raised their hands? Uh, I have stopped. Uh, we still see your screen coming in. Okay. Uh, we have a question coming in from Nimra Umar. One second, Nimra, I'll uh, unmute you. Uh, go ahead, Nimra. 
Hello, everyone. Thank you, Dipali, for such wonderful training. Um, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Yes. Hello. Yes, yeah. we can hear you. Um, Dipali, you said. Uh, the, yeah. Uh, Dipali, you said that uh, the prices should be kept competitive so that they may attract consumers. Um, right. We um, have made, and I find it very hard to keep the prices competitive uh, to attract consumers because um, when we source out our materials and the practices which we adhere to uh, for an eco-friendly business, um, the prices get um, higher. So um, the prices, uh, uh, the quality and the prices makes the product higher. So what would you suggest? Um, how can we um, keep the prices still attract, uh, attractive to consumers so that uh, we can stay in the business? Because I find it very hard when people, people show a great interest in our product, but when they come to know about the prices, they're like, seriously, they're too high for us. And that's a bit... Um, you know, um, yeah. that. Yes, I can understand what you meant is like because you are into eco friendly, that is organic kind of products, your prices are high, right? So, yeah. in, in your case, you are selling it to the niche market. So, uh, for niche market, your price you cannot reduce because your product is also unique and the competition, you cannot compete with the non organic or uh, non eco friendly kind of products. So your products and your market is yeah niche. And so I suggest that you should not uh, reduce the price, but you should find premium customers who are looking for organic or eco-friendly products like yours. So that you need to mention when you mention your products. So mention in detail, like how the process uh, of your manufacturing or how uh, eco-friendly and how best it is for the environment. So even uh, we sell some of the products which are uh, designed by differently able, uh, physically challenged people. Uh, mm -hmm. So the prices are high because uh, for a physically challenged person to create that kind of painting, it takes long time and definitely is for charity kind of little bit of social causes involved. So people understand that and uh, they are ready to pay the higher price. So I'm sure you will get uh, yeah niche market and niche customers for your uh, business and uh, all the best thank you dipali ma'am we'll take one more question from pramila because we're going behind schedule uh, pramila you can speak please quick question okay thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to speak on it uh, actually i have one questions about this uh, bar mar uh, bar marker just like a uh, barcode reader and the code, how to put the course, like, you know, as she said, like uh, three different types of scores, like uh, in the beginning, what, what, what type of, for the stock you need and for the price and the, for the colors, like uh, for each and every product, we need to have a uh, unique code, right? So for that unique code, for the, uh, we, we may produce the kind of uh, product for in the number, right? So for, for the same product, but in the number, how do we put the different code? Uh, basically, uh, you need to contact the agency who will provide you with the barcode details. And they also provide you with the labels and the barcode printer and all the information. And uh, you need to different sizes also may, will, ha will result into different barcode because when you scan it, the price and the description differs. So uh, you contact the agency, they will uh, define for you and give you the details. Uh, no, it you, looks like, you know, not very easy, like for in such case, we need to add for pricing also, right? So it is correlated with the price and product coding and everything, then it would be somehow yeah. difficult for us to manage everything at once in the beginning. 
uh, yes in the beginning what you can do is at your end you can do it you need not go for barcode and uh, at your end you can manually define the code like uh, what i do for selling sarees so green color saree means saree 001 hyphen g saree 001 hyphen r for red saree like that i have defined and then i maintain the because my uh, list of products are not very vast and uh, it is easy to manage manually but if you are going for very uh, like a vast inventory then you need to contact the agencies no we produce the uh, product in quantity not the very vast but maybe like you know for the jewelries or something like that then we'll produce the same kind of jewelries but in different colors or something like that then it would be very difficult for the coding <clears throat> yeah uh, better you contact the business consultant because i'm more kind of a technology consultant and uh, i may not be able to guide you uh, regarding this okay okay thank you thank you very much ma'am yeah thank you thank you so much pramila i uh, will take one last question from mr ali asgar and then we'll go on to the next session so quickly yeah thank you for uh, thank you for giving me chance i'm for i'm ali asgar nasir from bisik bangladesh Bisik uh, means Bangladesh Small and Water Industries Corporation. We are also making, uh, uh, preparing a uh, Bisik online market platform for the entrepreneurs of Bisik. Bisik uh, patronizing a huge number of Bangladeshi entrepreneurs. They are from uh, rural areas. So uh, I want to know what is the uh, business model of uh, Wiesel? Uh, can you please describe the Wiesel business model and delivery channel and uh, other issues like pa payment gateways? Uh, yeah, basically uh, we sell online, we have next session. And uh, what I would like to tell is we sell online is not generating sales. We are not accepting payments, but we, we are generating leads. So you will get the leads and then the customer uh, and you can deal directly offline or online and you can accept the payment directly. Right now, because of the different uh, boundaries and different countries, we are not accepting the payment online. Uh, Mr. Ali, uh, we do have a session on Visa and online and that will give you in detail information about what the net page is all about and what the platform is all about. And we'll take more questions there. And I think we'll be able to clarify you there much better. And in case there's some more questions coming in, I'll request everybody to put it on the chat box. We'll take it in the q and session. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, going, uh, now going on to the next session. I'd like to invite uh, Ms. Anush Der Bosman, a WTO General Policy Advisor for her session on trade, gender, and multilateral. Ma'am, you have the floor. Thank you very much, uh, Suvira. Thank you so much. Is that okay, is everybody listening to me? Yes, go ahead. Excellent. Um, I have a small presentation just to for people to to be able to follow up um, my, um, what I'm going to say today. So I will just share my screen, is that okay? Yes, ma'am, go ahead. Razia? Razia? Uh, ma'am, can you maximize and make it in the yeah. presentation mode? Oh, sorry. Oh, it's not the one. <laughs> sorry about that. Voila. Sorry. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm very happy to be here today. Uh, I would like to, to thank you, um, uh, Suvera, and also uh, Raja and, and UNS Cap for um, for that, inviting me to this uh, to this training. I mean, uh, this morning I've already learned a lot. Uh, so that's uh, that's really that's really great. Um, and today I'm going to talk about um, what the, the WTO, the World Trade Organization, is doing in, in um, on e-commerce and uh, also on uh, gender equality. But before I start, I will um, I will just very in a very few words talk about the WTO. So the WTO is an intergovernmental organization. So they are, its, its members are composed of, um, of governments and we have 164 members in the organization. The role of the organization is, is pretty simple um, and straightforward. So the WTO is the guardian of international 
trade rules. And in order to do that, um, the, the, uh, the organization has um, four work pillars. So uh, Ma'am, sorry to interrupt. Uh, sure. There's a message is coming on that uh, your voice is breaking. So could you be a little ah. louder, please? Thank you. Sure, of course. So as I was, uh, as I was saying, is it better? Yes, ma'am, it's better there. Thank you. Excellent. So as I was saying, the WTO has 164 members. Its role mainly is to be the guardian of international trade rules. And in order to do that, um, it's basing its work on four pillars. The first one is negotiating um, international trade rules. So I uh, will get to that in a minute with the, um, the new um, draft of the uh, e-commerce agreement that members are currently negotiating. Then the second work pillar is looking at building capacity or building trade capacity of developing countries. Uh, we're devoting um, about 35% of our resources to, to, to this uh, activity. Then the third pillar, which is very important, is that um, is the, um, that the organization is also settling disputes between governments, um, because uh, it's nice to have rules, it's nice to to be the guardians of these rules, it's nice to negotiate rules, but then when you come to implement them, um, they are uh, binding rules, and so uh, members have to really apply them um, across the board. And then the fourth work pillar is monitoring trade policy. So in order to, let's say, implement uh, the WTO agreements, uh, the trade rules, governments designed national trade policies that can, um, that can translate these rules into, um, uh, into um, nationally. And um, the WTO is also monitoring these, these, um, these, uh, these trade uh, policies. Then um, I just briefly, again, I would like to talk about the decision-making of the organization. So basically, as I said, we have 164 countries and when they make decisions, they have to make them by consensus, which often makes things, can make things uh, complicated. But on the other hand, that we haven't found a better way of, of making decisions in the WTO for the moment. So secondly, um, I would like to talk about uh, gender equality in the WTO. So the WTO went from being completely gender blind to being gender aware. And so what does it mean exactly? So until 2016, the WTO did not really recognize gender issues uh, and um, the, the obstacles that women are, were facing in, uh, in trade because for the WTO until then, um, the rules were completely gender neutral. So they would apply similarly to men and women. And so basically the organization said, well, you know, if it's the case, then why do we need to focus on this? We basically know um, that this is not, uh, you know, this is not the reality. We know that women entrepreneurs um, are facing um, higher barriers than men in accessing trade. I'm not going to give you a, a course on that is not the purpose, but that's that's um, there is tons of evidence from the WTO and other organizations in that regard. Um, so what does it mean now to be gender aware? So basically now the, the WTO is really looking to um, improve the, the daily, um, uh, let's say, conditions of women um, by addressing uh, their specific needs and of course focusing solely on trade. That's the mandate of the WTO looking at international trade. So basically um, the, the WTO work is focusing on really lifting inequalities that women face in trade. And um, in, order, in order to do that, uh, the, um, the members uh, of the organization, well, actually not all of them. So 127 members out of the 164 have created this informal working group on trade and gender. And this is where they look at these issues, um, exchange experience, uh, exchange um, ideas of how to lift these, um, these, uh, these obstacles. So for the moment, as I said, it's not all the members of the organizations, it's 127, 
but we're hopeful that at some point um, the, the others will, will, will join the, the working group. So I just, I want to give you some, um, some, uh, some ideas about uh, the different work that we're doing on, on uh, digital transformation for women as part of the, the informal working group. And I want to give you a few examples of, of policies that have been set up by different countries. Um, I chose on purpose, um, you know, not countries that are in, in, in South Asia. We'll have some other uh, examples uh, in South Asia uh, because I want to show that also, um, you know, give examples of what's happening outside uh, the region because I think it could be quite, quite interesting. So if we go to, to Chinese Taipei, for example, Chinese Taipei has created uh, what they call the Women's Center Entrepreneurship Program that supports women um, in all stages of, um, of the um, entrepreneurial activities. And um, they have um, informative and professional courses, mostly to enhance women entrepreneurs' skills and knowledge. And they include, uh, for example, digital marketing courses. So this is an example where we see that, that governments actually are actually implementing programs to support women in the digital economy. Um, then we have uh, countries like El Salvador um, in, the, in the Central American region. They have, they have been supporting women's export through e-commerce. They provide the training um, as well uh, to build, um, as well as not just women entrepreneurs, but also um, other um, stakeholders, uh, such as, for example, uh, uh, um, officials uh, in, uh, in agencies. And so the idea would be to develop those skills so that together with women entrepreneurs, they could develop this uh, e-commerce ecosystem that works for them. Um, in Australia, Australia has set up uh, a specific fund. Uh, they call it the e-commerce aid for trade fund. And basically it supports countries in addressing, um, let's say the, the deficits in access to uh, to, um, to new technologies uh, and finance, uh, supports governments to build their um, policies on, on e-commerce, strategies on e-commerce, and all the different uh, regulatory frameworks. Um, it also um, supports uh, safe uh, and reliable e-payment platform, for example, as well as supports trade facilitation and logistics. So this fund is quite interesting because again, it doesn't just focus on uh, one aspect of e-commerce. It looks at all the aspects of e-commerce. We also have the US that have um, capacity building programs on digital trade in various regions, uh, some of, uh, focusing somehow on Central Asia as well as, as, well as Southeast Asia. These are uh, targeting mostly uh, women entrepreneurs. And uh, Japan as well has been um, supporting Vietnam, women in low, with low income in Vietnam by promoting uh, digital financial services. So these are just a few examples um, they can, that could serve as models, just also to give you an idea about, you know, what's, what's, the, um, what's the activities that have been uh, are happening um, as part of the work of the informal working group in the WTO. Now um, we have um, a couple of months uh, ahead of us before we head to the WTO ministerial conference. So the, the WTO, the ministerial conference in the WTO is the highest uh, decision-making body in the organization. And so this is where ministers, trade ministers um, meet uh, and give the organization um, the, their homework basically for the next two years. So every two years they would meet, they would take stock about what's happening in terms of the work that has been carried out, also in terms of where things stand in terms of negotiating new rules on trade, on international trade. And so often they would, they would take, take decisions in a sense that they could adopt uh, new agreements. And I'll get to that in a minute. Or they could just say, okay, we give recommendations or commit to, to work on certain issues. And at the 12th ministerial conference, which is going to take place 
uh, at the end of this year, so end of November, early December this year. Um, the group of members, the 127 members that are committed to work on, on women's um, uh, empowerment in the WTO um, will most probably make, um, uh, approve or adopt a declaration that contains a set of recommendations to support uh, women um, and also going beyond the ministerial conference saying that they would adopt a work plan with really concrete action points to support women. So it goes uh, from uh, capacity building programs to uh, supporting members' uh, data collection um, uh, processes. So it's, it's quite, um, or it goes through Aid for Trade. Uh, Aid for Trade can be a, a very uh, important um, agent um, to support women's economic empowerment. So um, this is where we stand in terms of, of the work of the, of the WTO. And we will see at the end of this year how things, how things uh, will evolve. Now, um, I would like to talk about more, to focus more on electronic commerce, obviously. And just saying that, you know, electronic commerce obviously can work for women. We've seen that in, the, in today's pandemic. We've seen that many women have been, uh, have been shifting their um, offline uh, companies to uh, online, um, and um, but there are some um, there are some obstacles still uh, that women have to uh, continue to face. And uh, I would like to talk about the, the global gender digital divide. Actually, so if you look at the, the 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 global picture, we can see that the global gender gap, for example, in internet access, is uh, estimated to be at seventeen percent. Um, this gap, um, the, the gender, digital, gender digital divide has been actually growing in developing countries in the past five years, which is extremely worrisome because if you are now promoting um, or, or helping women um, integrate uh, digital trade and e-commerce, then if this, uh, you know, the lack of access to these new technologies still persists and is growing, then it's a very big concern that needs to be addressed. Um, and so even, even when women are connected, we see that they often have um, uh, low level hardware and or they are really poorly funded in, in technology. And so we also have some issues in terms of, of uh, cyber security that women and, and girls are more vulnerable to, uh, to cyber bullying, for example, or online fraud than men. So these are a few obstacles. I mean, this is, these are, this is global, of course. But then if you look at South Asia, South Asia is also suffering from a big uh, gender digital divide. Actually, um, if we look uh, at South Asia, at, um, uh, South Asia is actually the world's widest, has the world's world widest gender digital gap. And it's, it sets at uh, 51%, which is quite, quite important even though it has decreased from uh, uh, 2017 from uh, 67%. So it's, it's encouraging, but it's still quite, um, quite uh, the widest in the world. Uh, also in South, in South Asia, um, the WTO has conducted um, a survey with uh, women entrepreneurs uh, throughout the region. And the, uh, the, it has done that with the partnership of uh, SODEF, so, and which I would like to to recognize here, it's a, it's a very strong partner of, of the WTO, and um, I'm really grateful for this partnership. And actually, the surveys that we did with SODEF uh, in the region show that 38% of women entrepreneurs uh, face difficulties in accessing e-commerce distribution platform. So platforms. So it's quite quite important. Um, but you know the 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 the, the picture is not is not uh, is not that gloomy. Uh, I would say because actually when we look at things, when we look at women and women entrepreneurs, we see that women entrepreneurs are more innovative. Um, they tend to be a bit more innovative than men. Um, globally, actually, they have five percent more chances to be more innovative. Um, you may think that five percent is not a lot, but actually, if you look at it. From the global perspective, it's quite quite interesting. And then also we see that when women are trained in new technologies, um, actually when women entrepreneurs are trained in new technologies, they tend to use them more than men to run their businesses. 
So uh, I think we really need to build on these strengths. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the, the COVID-19 has uh, impacted um, women's uh, businesses a lot. And um, digital, digital technologies have become really, I think, a, a lifeline for women entrepreneurs. Um, we've seen that e-commerce has been growing fast even before COVID-19, actually, even before the pandemic. And um, a lot of people like, you know, in 2019, there were about 1.5 billion people that were shopping online, uh, which is an increase of 7% from 2018. So uh, I can tell you my personal experience. Uh, I, am a, I am a consumer and uh, I do my, my, uh, my, online, my shopping now online. 80% um, of my shopping is made online. I particularly fond of Instagram, but that's, that's, that's another thing. So actually, um, the, I think, you know, the, the, as I said, the pandemic has really um, accent, accentuated the, the, this, uh, this shift towards e-commerce. And so um, I think that uh, we need to, uh, we need to, to, to work with, uh, with women uh, and women entrepreneurs towards this goal. And uh, obviously the, the, the training today is, is doing just that. So uh, what's happening uh, in terms of um, rules governing e-commerce, international rules governing e-commerce? Um, this, this is quite important. Um, I've, I've done, I've done um, some trainings with women entrepreneurs on, on the rules of trade. And uh, sometimes they would say to me, well, is it, is it that important? All we want to know is how to set up a business online. But actually, um, it's not just settling a business online, it's also you, you still have to follow the rules of international trade. That is to say, you still have to be able uh, to, um, to certify your products when you are exporting your, your, pro your product um, outside your, your borders. You, you still need to, uh, to understand what are the different uh, tariffs and taxes apply to your, to your product when you export your product. So these are uh, some of these rules that are quite, quite important to understand because e-commerce is not just setting a, a, a web page, um, uh, is also looking at all these uh, elements of international trade and especially the rules governing international trade. And so basically what members have decided today um, is uh, actually from um, 2019, um, they've started to, uh, to negotiate the trade uh, related aspects of e-commerce. Um, it started with, um, again, it's not the whole organization. So it's not the 164 members that are negotiating these rules right now. And um, it started with 76 members. And now we are at 86 members that are currently uh, negotiating uh, rules that can govern e-commerce. And these members represent about 90% of global trade. So they are quite, uh, quiet uh, representative. And, oh, so, and um, they're also representative of uh, various regions and development levels. So it's quite um, a balanced representation. And so uh, the provisions contained uh, in the draft agreement. So I'm, I'm talking about, um, um, I'm just sidelining a, a few seconds here. I'm talking about the draft agreement because this is the agreement that is currently being discussed and negotiated. So all the provisions that I'm going to tell you about, they can be changed tomorrow. Um, but I want to highlight some of these because I think no matter how they are drafted, they will still remain in the main document. Um, and so, um, of course, how they are drafted is important too. But at least in terms of the basic principles, that would be included in, these, uh, in this new agreement um, is quite important. And the reason why this agreement will be important is that if it's adopted at the end of this year, um, as I explained at the ministerial conference, then members that are signed, the, that will sign this agreement will have to implement it. So it will translate in your national uh, laws, basically. So that's important for you to, to understand. Of course, you, you know, uh, continuing to, to, to do the sign line, once the text is, is approved and negotiated, negotiated and approved, then um, we will probably do um, a small um, 
a, a small um, summary of it, looking at the main provisions that could be uh, important, um, and uh, we would be able to, to share it uh, with you so that you are well aware about uh, of uh, what will be um, what what are, the, what are the different commitments that these members will take. So, in terms of the, the different the, the current uh, draft provisions that are contained in this uh, in this draft agreement, um, so very broadly they look at six topics. So, ob obviously, the one uh, topic is enabling e-commerce. Uh, members are not here to say. We're going to put so many barriers that we're going to stop this happening for for uh, for businesses. That's not the that's not the uh, that's not the uh, the objective here. But the objective is to build a framework which where uh, this uh, e-commerce can be can be done um, on a on a safe and trusted uh, basis. Then, of course, the 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 the, the second topic is openness and e-commerce. So again, uh, same thing. Openness is very important. The WTO is about opening markets, it's not about closing markets. Uh, the, the, the third topic is trust and e-commerce. So the trust issue is very important. So you have a whole, um, a whole list um, of issues included in the draft agreement, looking at, for example, uh, data privacy. Um, then uh, the other topic look, they look at is market access. What are the different conditions of market access? Um, telecommunications uh, is obviously an important issue and cross-cutting cross issues. So telecommunications relates in the end more uh, to the infrastructure um, than uh, the rules itself. So a few, a few points in the draft agreement. Um, so I'd like to say that um, um, the, the negotiations, they really aim at uh, facilitating digital trade and um, um, this is um, they want to members want to minimize the regulatory burdens on electronic commerce so that's 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 something which is quite quite clear um, for example they want to avoid measures that hinder electronic commerce or have um, effects of treating commerce by electronic means uh, in a more restrictive manner than commerce conducted by other means, let's say by more traditional means. So they're somehow creating an, a non-discrimination principle between the commerce done online and the commerce done offline. Um, also, uh, there are some, um, some, uh, some important aspect in the, draft, uh, um, in the draft text, which looks at establishing the legal value of electronic, uh, electronic signatures, electronic contracts, electronic invoices, with the possibility of having maybe a e-invoicing standard, international standard at some point. And this is really to support uh, the, um, the operations, uh, the cross-border operations, and to protect uh, also entrepreneurs as well as consumers. Um, also, the regulations would uh, prohibit the conclusion of uh, a transaction um, would, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, would not actually, the, 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 the agreement would not prohibit the conclusion of a transaction solely on the basis of the payment um, uh, of um, uh, on the basis that the payment is in electronic form. So it's not because your payment is in electronic form that it's going to be prohibited. Uh, these are, you know, small, maybe small details, but it's quite important if you have laws uh, going in that direction. Um, uh, there is a, they're also establishing a no discrimination principle uh, with the respect to the supply of electronic payment services between foreign and domestic providers. So this is goes beyond just setting up an e-commerce platform or having you know, your electronic signature, having a legal value. It's also about all these different services providers that you know, provide the ecosystem of, of e-commerce. Um, so the, the agreement goes also beyond, beyond that. Another thing that the, 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 the agreement would, would, would focus on um, is really, and this is, I think, very important for, for women entrepreneurs, uh, creating a paperless border environment uh, for, for um, trade of goods. So, and also making sure that the information is available and has the legal equivalent of the paper version of those documents. 
So um, this is quite important, the paperless border environment, the fact that those uh, electronic, electronic, um, uh, electronic, uh, let's say, uh, documents have the same value as the paper documents. So the idea would, would be, for example, to say, if you submit an electronic document, then you don't need to submit a paper document to support the electronic document, because then it's, it's burdensome, it adds a lot of red tape to, to the whole process. Um, also, this is, um, you know, another rule which is quite, uh, quite important is uh, what we call um, in, uh, in the WTO the de minimis rule. I think this is a rule which is quite important for women entrepreneurs. Um, actually, this rule is very simple. It, um, it provides the possibility of members to set a value uh, in its law below which it will not collect customs duties or taxes on shipments. So this is quite important because it's very important for the, the small packages. And we see that women entrepreneurs often trade in small packages. And uh, this, is, this would be quite, uh, quite important. It would facilitate, um, uh, it would facilitate the e-commerce for, for women entrepreneurs. Um, so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a rule which is, uh, which is quite important. Um, just uh, as, a, as a sideline, this rule is also included in another WTO agreement, which was uh, adopted in 2013, which is the trade facilitation uh, agreement. But uh, re reinforcing it uh, in this agreement is, is quite important. Um, as, you, as you can understand, if we don't facilitate trade, then we can't have e-commerce. Um, and there are a lot of different uh, provisions supporting um, uh, small businesses um, in, throughout, the, uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the text, saying that, for example, members would commit to adjust their trade policies um, to, uh, to the new developments of trade and the new developments of e-commerce in support of, of small businesses. Um, so these are, uh, another example would be to streamline licensing procedures uh, related to logistic services, um, as I explained uh, earlier. Um, another point which is quite important is transparency. And transparency of trade rules is extremely important We've seen in the surveys we did with, uh, with SODEF in 2019, the ones I mentioned before, that most of the, um, that one of the big hurdles that women entrepreneurs are facing is access to trade information. Um, and so the transparency principles that have been uh, set, you know, included in the agreement is quite important. So for example, uh, the, 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 the members would, uh, would commit to, um, to uh, set up an official website uh, with the database uh, that is electronically searchable uh, by, uh, by tariff codes, for example, or by, by relevant information. Um, it, could, it would include different uh, trade rules related information or, um, or I would say uh, information uh, related to uh, market access um, such as um, different tariffs, uh, rules of origin, um, uh, certifications, um, um, other different statistics related to, to trade. So there is the, the list is quite long. I'm not going to, to go because it's still, again, uh, very much being negotiated, but that's the idea of, of, of transparency on trade rules. Um, there is actually, uh, one uh, and I will uh, I will uh, uh, I will finish on, on the on the on these negotiations on this point. There is actually one gender provision uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the uh, in the in the draft agreement that looks at data privacy uh, and uh, personal data protection. So in the text, members would if they if they agree with that. Uh, use they would not use the personal information obtained from companies um, to discriminate on the basis of gender and sex. So this is something which is quite uh, quite important, um, and that's the only uh, that's the only uh, gender related provision in the in the uh, in the in the draft agreement. So 
basically, if it's the only one, then there is a big missed opportunity, right, for women and women entrepreneurs. Um, so the I would say yes, um, yes, uh, but uh, I would say yes because really uh, it's it's a missed opportunity to recognize the gender digital divide that I've just explained earlier, um, and it's uh, to to recognize also that. Um, that women are facing, you know, uh, higher obstacles to integrate, um, to 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 use e-commerce, and um, and then make sure that women can benefit entirely from the agreement um, by, for example, accessing technology and, and knowledge, so uh, addressing the specific needs of women entrepreneurs. So that's that I would say is a missed opportunity. But it's also maybe not um, a big a, a missed opportunity because, as I mentioned, some of the provisions, some of the draft provision, um, um, will be very supportive of, of women. Um, so it depends then on, on members when they implement the agreement, if they implement it with, um, you know, the uh, how we what we call the gender lens. That is to say, you know, understanding okay, where where are the the needs of women, and we, we we can address those needs by when we we we, we translate this agreement into our, our national trade policy. So this is something that actually we've been helping at the WTO members to do to implement those WTO agreements, the existing ones, and of course the future ones with this with this um, with this uh, with this gender lens to really make sure that when they they craft these trade policies they um, apply to the specific needs of women and women entrepreneurs. Um, I would say that also one more point is that on this, um, I think the WTO, as, as I mentioned, it's, it's been blind for the last, uh, I would say 20 years. Now the WTO is 25 years. And um, so it's just been five years that the WTO is looking at, at, the, at these issues at gender equality in trade. And so I think that the organization is not yet at the point where it can include these uh, specific provisions targeting women in these trade negotiations, especially because some countries are not fully, um, do not fully agree that trade can, can really support women. Um, and they agree that, okay, trade rules can support anybody. And so same line as we had before, and so because of that, um, some members are really, really hesitant to integrate uh, some of these uh, provisions in new negotiations. But I think um, in the next few years, uh, we, we're going to see a, a shift in, the, in, these, in these positions. So um, going on to the, to the last points of, of my presentation, uh, e-commerce, um, I would say, and you know, maybe uh, it's it's a it's a it's a negative title, but I think it's also uh, we need to have that um, reality in in mind that actually doing trade is not without costs. Uh, trade in general can be very costly, and um, uh, for example, you would need to. In, I would say I'm talking in general, for of course, right now. You would need to invest, I don't know, in, in specialized uh, IT systems, uh, in skill staff to deal with customs issues, for example, uh, packaging, certification, standard compliance, all these have a cost. And we can add to the, the, the cost of trade um, e-commerce, I think, because building your presence online can be, can be costly. You need to think about the fact that um, some some of you may already have um, um, may already have uh, a showroom somewhere or or a shop somewhere. So you have like a presence offline already, um, and so you want to transform that presence offline online. Uh, that could be that that is uh, that is something that you would need to uh, to to think about selling your products online in addition to having a physical, uh, a physical presence. Um, that's, that's, that's one thing. Others, they don't have a physical presence, they go directly online. That's, uh, that's also, uh, of course, uh, uh, an option. But this, these are, you know, if you have physical presence, then it's, it's adds to the whole, 
to the whole um, to the whole uh, cost of of doing uh, of just uh, you know uh, of um, doing your business basically. Um, selling um, online has infrastructure costs. Um, I think you know Dipali was explaining all these points, but you know if you have e-commerce software, domain name, uh, e-commerce hosting, certification, payment processing costs. Um, uh, you know, so these are just examples of, um, of, of, of these costs. You can also have design costs, um, web development, uh, designs, e-commerce services, mobile app design, um, digital, digital strategy, um, custom software development. You also have all the security aspect, which is data backup, security, inventory management, marketing. So, I mean, I think Dipali has obviously uh, greatly explained uh, many of these points, but, you know, these points may have a cost attached to them. So that's something that women entrepreneurs, I think, need to, to, to think about to integrate in their, in their strategies. Um, and one way of, of, of doing it, you know, doing it alone, it's fine. If you, if, you, if you can do it, that's perfectly fine. And having these sort of trainings today with UNSCAP, I think, can support you 100% by by uh, by doing that, but um, sometimes it's nice to do it uh, together. And I would like to give you the example of uh, Alizon. As it, Alizon is a is a website um, created um, uh, by women for women. It's a website which has been created by the Association of Lady Entrepreneurs of India. So Ali. Um, I remember when I visited them in 2019, just before the pandemic, they were building this, this, uh, they were building this, uh, this, this website, um, this, uh, this e-commerce website. And so now they have 10,000 women uh, online um, under this single uh, platform. Um, and it's not just an e-commerce platform. They also have a design studio uh, that uh, supports design elements for the, for the brands. That include um, includes uh, websites, social media, print media. They have an exhibit house as well. Um, they have a consulting forum on the readiness check certifications. They have a digital clinic, um, product reviews. Um, so they have, you know, women are just part of this big network now, which and they can support each other um, uh, through through that network, um, being part of that um, of that uh, e-commerce platform. They also have uh, offer digital marketing and communication services, uh, live uh, advertisements, interactive communication tools. Um, and of course, um, it gives you access to international trades. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't, you don't have to pay any commission to the, to, to the, uh, to the commerce platform and the data is protected and you also have transactions which are hassle free. So this is something that this uh, association uh, Alip has been doing, uh, has set up and um, making, making sure that e-commerce can work for women. And I think doing it together can be also, uh, can be also a, a, a good example. Um, and um, to, uh, to finish, um, we also have in the WTO, uh, we are creating this program for women entrepreneurs, which is called Bridge. Um, we've, we've, um, we've seen that actually women entrepreneurs really lack the knowledge of, on, on trade rules and proceedings. Um, and this is, again, it can be, uh, <clears throat> it can be another, another cost added to, to, the, to the list. So um, we've, we've seen that in the surveys we conducted with, with SODEF that 35% uh, of women entrepreneurs have not received any clear information on customs requirements, for example, they express difficulties in accessing information on international export imports, uh, um, on international import and exports, uh, including the tariffs. So they also have not uh, been uh, trained. Uh, less than <clears throat> the less than half of the women we surveyed uh, said to us that they receive trainings on trade very generally, and only uh, less than uh, forty percent said that they had these uh, trainings on uh, trade regulations and custom procedures. And often we see that these trainings are, are very much uh, ad hoc trainings, nothing long-term. So basically you, you go through this course, 
and then you you learn so much and then you go off and then if you have questions if you want to follow up um you don't you don't have the service that supports you after after the training and um and this is what we're going to do uh, at the wto we will set up this program to support women entrepreneurs understanding these rules of trade understanding where to find the information um, and to be able to uh, to to develop their um, their capacity to to export. Um, so uh, you know this is this is really strengthening women entrepreneurs' um, export capacity. Um, this um, this this program will be actually uh, very much tailor made on the needs of women entrepreneurs. It will be really regionally anchored, so it will be also responding to the regional needs of, of women entrepreneurs. Um, it will be also it will include the train the trainer program. So if the women entrepreneurs that have been trained through the program wants to mentor and support other women, train other women, then we will have that sort of of, of possibility in the program. Um, they will have there will be uh, services to support. In the, in the implementation of knowledge. So that is to say that basically we will have um, what I call the uh, an after sale service. That is to say, you know, if women entrepreneurs, they, they take the course, they will have all the material with them, but then they still have questions or they are faced with an issue they can't deal with in terms of, of trade, um, uh, you know, trade issues then we will be there to support them and answer their questions and, and guide them through um, the, the issues they are, they are facing. So it's not just leaving them, uh, you know, really holding their hands towards after the, 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 the training has, has happened. Um, so, uh, and we would like to, through the program, to reinforce the networking um, of, uh, of, of women entrepreneurs um, and to also reinforce uh, women entrepreneurs' advocacy capacity on trade rules. Because as you see, we have now um, an e-commerce uh, agreement that is being negotiated. If you don't know what your governments are negotiating at the WTO, you can't influence the system to say, okay, please integrate these issues because these are very important to us. So you can't somehow lobby your governments so that you know, when your government take a, take a position in the WTO, they can also include your concerns and your needs uh, as part of the government position. So this is also something that, uh, that we want to, um, to, to, uh, to support. Uh, very lastly, I would like to say that this program uh, will be um, now we intend to launch it next year, um, in, uh, in the summer of next year. We've been working on this program for the last two years to really construct it the way that it really addresses the needs of women entrepreneurs in terms of building their knowledge on, on trade and trade rules. And we've now um, have uh, two partners with us. We have uh, UNSCAP and the EIF that have um, agreed in principle to, uh, to come and, and deliver um, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, sessions on, on e-commerce. Um, I think you know, we're building on, the, on, the, on this great uh, training that uh, UNSCAP is doing today. We also have in principle the, the World Bank that will also um, come as a, as a partner. And we are looking at, uh, at uh, one other partner as well as uh, talking to governments uh, to have their support in the program. So um, this is why it takes a bit, a bit more time than, uh, than, um, than I really want to, 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 um, to, to spend in, in launching this program. I am a strong believer of this program. I've met many women entrepreneurs in different uh, regions, uh, in South Asia, of course, in East Africa, uh, in Latin America, in Russia, in Europe. And um, I believe that trade can really support them. Um, and, uh, but it's not just, it's really supporting them. You know, it's not what I want to do, just saying, okay, well, you know, we need to support them. I really want to support them with concrete uh, tools that can really help them get to the, uh, you know, integrate international trade. So this is where, where we are at in the WTO. And I thank you for your attention.
Thank you so much, ma'am. It was a really insightful uh, session. Uh, if there's anyone and any, any questions, uh, the floor is open right now. You can put it on the chat box or even raise your hands. Uh, okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for your wonderful session. And we look forward for more engagements. Uh, now moving on to the next session. Uh, okay, so now next 15 minutes, we are going to do, do a like a Q&A session and we're going to be also doing like a break where you could ask your questions. It's an open floor. You could put it on the chat box. Uh, Anush, ma'am, we have a first question coming in for you. Can we send our projects for women to you? Uh, Subira, I would also suggest uh, uh, after these Q and A, if you have time, mm -hmm. that survey link you can uh, put it in, and then you can organize. Yes, sir. I'll Thank share you. the survey link as well. Uh, would you like to answer this, ma'am? Uh, yes, please. I mean, uh, I would be happy to to receive any any sort of uh, projects, comments, ideas. Uh, absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm here to, to also listen to you and understand you better, so that I can service you better. I am sharing sharing the survey link with everybody on the chat box. I'll request everyone to spare two minutes and fill this form. It will really be helpful for us in our study that we are conducting on COVID impact on women entrepreneurs. Also, the floor is open. Uh, we we have Dipali Nam also here. And uh, Dr. Rajan is also here, and we have Anush ma'am also. So, anyone has any questions, feel free to raise your hand or put it on the chat box. Also, I am sharing the link for the e learning course that Dr. Rajan had shared in the morning. I'm putting it on the chat box for everybody's reference. Additionally, I one more request to everybody to put your phone numbers on the chat box so that we can take a note of it and we can include you in the WhatsApp group that we plan to create at the end of the training. Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Rajan, would you want to take this question? Uh, there's a question from Bandha Tiwari asking, uh, how can we provide more exposure and support for our women members? Well, it depends on what kind of support, uh, uh, you know, these uh, uh, women want. Uh, if it comes to, because she has also asked another question, which I was seeing in, she's working in an NGO and how she is, CAP can help. Well, we can only help through these kind of training and capacity building programs. If you are, Organizing some training where you find e training on e-commerce and other things would be useful. Uh, we can come as a resource person uh, and do the training. Uh, the second is uh, mostly on the women. Honestly speaking, it is uh, the human women, but it's only the uh, e-commerce which uh, we can uh, work on. And if you find that there are uh, uh, more women who can get this kind of support and a training, then uh, keep in touch. Next training we might organize sometime in November or December in a virtual mode, and then uh, you can make them register for this training course, um, and they can benefit from this. The second you can help is, you know, we have already developed an online e-learning course on e-commerce and digital marketing. That is free, and for that, uh, nobody is required to attend virtually. So you can pass that information to the ladies and the women entrepreneurs and they can at their own pace uh, learn that. There is no cost involved in it. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, sir. We had one more question come, which had come in previously was, uh, for starting a business, do we need a website and how can we build? Uh, Dipali ma'am, would you want to take that question? Yeah. Uh, to start your business, actually, you don't need a website, but if you want to start selling online, either you have to go for your own website or you can go for marketplace. Also, uh, if you have uh, less budget and initially you want to start with uh, 
say Facebook, you can start with Facebook and uh, create one Facebook business page, which can work like your e-commerce store. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. We had another question coming in Diwali, ma'am, again for you. Do we need GST for FB or Instagram business account? Uh, no, we don't need GST for FB or Instagram business account. Uh, another similar question on the same lines was, uh, how can I increase uh, engagement on Instagram? I've been on business for several years, but uh, there is a little problem of not being so stable. Uh, to generate business on Instagram, basically you need to have quality followers and for that you need to have quality content and uh, more and more promotion you need to do. Uh, initially you can run also Instagram ads which is the uh, SEM, uh, sorry, SM, uh, social media marketing, SMM. And uh, with that, initially you can have an uh, uh, audience base for your business. And then later on with the good content and uh, with engaging uh, users content, you can definitely generate more and more followers and uh, which can uh, give you more business growth. Uh, Dipali ma'am, we had another similar question coming in uh, while you were taking while you were taking your session on Instagram and Facebook, asking the steps to do how to do Instagram and Facebook. Uh, to that, I'd like to tell everybody we have it on the presentation and we'll be sharing the link with everybody. But uh, Dipali ma'am, would you want to add anything to that? Uh, the steps to create business page. Uh, yes, the steps on creating Facebook business page, uh, there were question come on the chat box while you were taking the session. Okay, uh, so uh, first you need to create your account and uh, which is very simple process just by verifying your email or your phone number you can create account and then you create your business page. Business page is something like a mini website. So you need to add the profile photo, the cover, the category you need to select and then you need to create your timeline. So uh, if time permits, after the VCL online session, I will uh, create quickly and uh, show it so that we can have our uh, Facebook business page also ready. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Anush, ma'am, we have a question coming in for you. Does WTO offer financial help for women starting a business? Would you like to take that question? Thank you. Uh, no, the WTO doesn't offer uh, financial support. Uh, for for business women, uh, the idea of the of the program is to to to, to support them uh, technically. Um, however, having said that, we are starting to think about uh, creating a trade and gender fund um, at the WTO um, in partnership with the uh, International Trade Center to support programs focusing on women entrepreneurs. So this is something that we're planning to do. Hopefully in the next few months, we will be able to announce that. And that could be the start of, of, uh, of um, uh, uh, you know, a more financial um, uh, support programs from the WTO. But this is still to be, uh, to be, uh, to be decided. Mm -hmm. Uh, does anyone have any other question or any, if I've missed out on any question, feel free to raise your hand and uh, we'll take it up. There was one question about uh, warehouse of resale online. Uh, as I mentioned before, we do not have warehouse because we don't take care of any shipping. Also, we do not take care of accepting payment. So it's basically a lead generation platform and a training platform. So uh, there is no warehouse for we sell online. Uh, the we have 10 minutes time. Uh, would you want to take everybody to the Facebook page? It, I think that will be very interesting. Okay, uh, ma'am, hold on for a minute. We have one question coming in from Deepthi. Uh, Deepthi, give me a moment. I'll un unmute you for you to raise us. Go ahead, Deepthi. You have the floor. Uh, Deepthi, are you there? Yeah. Am yes, I audible to you? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Yeah, I just want to ask you since uh, right now the ma'am said that you know you do not manage any kind of warehouses and all, and it's just the lead generation. So I just need to know that how it works. I mean, like when we come on, we sell online and we register our products there. 
so how does it happen the leads come directly to the supplier or how does it happen can you just throw some light on that uh Deepi ma'am, uh, if you can give us ten minutes time, the next session is on resale online, and oh, we'll sure. give you a detailed uh, rundown on what the session, uh, what the web platform is all about, and how it's going to be helping you to train and for the lead generation. Sure, sure, that will be great. Thank you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thanks. Uh, okay, so uh, there's a question coming in. We filled out the form. Does it need to be filled out form? Uh, Nastaran, if you are asking about the survey form, no, it's just once that you need to fill out. That uh, we are sharing the link for everyone who not filled out the form yet. Additionally, I'll you can now take this time and try to register for the e-learning course that Dr. Rajan was talking about. And uh, feel free uh, to log in, and in case you're facing any issues, you can let us know. Uh, one more thing, I'll take this opportunity for anyone who wants to showcase about, tell about the entrepreneurial story, uh, feel free to raise your hand and uh, I'll unmute you. You can tell about your entrepreneurial story, how COVID has impacted you, or you would even want to show your products or do a little bit of networking. The floor is open. We have another five minutes here. And in case you're feeling shy, feel free to share it to me on, on the email address. Are we sharing our email addresses? And uh, you can uh, share it on the email. We'll be, we'll be happy to put it on our social media platforms, on our website, and tell about you and your stories. Can I request my, uh, my support team to please put on the chat box, the Facebook links and the Instagram links. Everybody can take this opportunity to of time and uh, do login on the, those groups, please. Thank you. So my colleagues have shared uh, Instagram link account, Facebook and the Facebook page and the Twitter account. Uh, feel free to log on these pages and we have a large number of members also participating here on the chats and all. And you could also be part of these groups. Would anyone want to share about their products or anything? We have uh, five minutes time. We'll start the next session at 3.30. Okay, so uh, Tinley, would you want to share about your products? Okay, uh, let me unmute you. Would you want to uh, speak about them? Are you there, Tinley? You can speak. Yeah. Uh, yeah, can you see me? Yes, I can. You can, you have a, a minute for you, yourself. You can tell about your products. You can tell about your story as a woman entrepreneur. Uh, thank you so much for having this platform for the women entrepreneurs. Uh, my name is Tinle. Uh, I'm the founder of Bhutan Superfoods and Herbs from Bhutan. So my products are mainly herbal teas and uh, I do grains and flowers also. And then uh, I normally uh, help uh, farmers also, and particularly farmers, but they are like the uh, majority of my uh, the. Uh, suppliers are women so it's like few only the few of them are men and then we uh, get uh, raw materials from them and it's uh, everything is made in Bhutan except for the packaging and then uh, I'll just share you with uh, my products so just give me a minute so no very Uh, we aren't able to see about your products in late. 
not a problem mm -hmm. tinli uh, you'll have time on 6th because we dedicating session for networking then uh, yeah, thank you then. thank you so much for taking this platform and sharing about yourself uh, i'd like to now give the floor to deepthi varma deepthi you have the floor Hello everyone. Uh, my name is Dipti Verma. I'm from India, and uh, I'm the founder for uh, Neem Selections. So the Neem here goes for natural, elegant, ethnic, and majestic products. So whatever we do is basically our our uh, association is with women, the local women who are living in villages and making beautiful handicrafts. And you know, in this COVID, they were hit bad, extremely bad. They were not, unable to earn. not even a penny for their families so we launched neem as a responsible section of society and you know we gave them this online platform of ours where we pick up all these product of theirs which they make at their home and small villages and towns and they do it beautifully i mean be it your home decor be it your curtains rugs be it your uh, you know small handicrafts items and you know they i'm happy that i have been able to support these women out there and for the last four months they are earning at least some kind of revenues for their families to run through so under neem what we do is basically everything hand crafted home made and home grown so whatever you can think of for your better living these days it comes under neem so it can be your organic fashion it can be your organic fabric it can be your non adulterated naturally grown herbs and spices uh, so you know whatever i'm mean, like from a to z comes under neem and it is all done by these small underprivileged women so i'm really happy to you know uh, come up with the neem as a platform which is giving me as in women to all other women a right platform to at least use their talents and earn their livelihoods so i think uh, thank you I so much really it's a wonderful initiative that you've taken thank you so much uh, i'll i'll take this next two minutes dipali ma'am would you want to take everybody through the facebook page uh, and give a little bit more guidance to everybody i think that will be a good interest for everyone uh, yes we can do that so uh, i'll share my screen yes ma'am go ahead so basically i will go to facebook first uh ma'am would it be possible for you to increase the facebook page the uh, si phone size or something yeah yeah just to make it a little more readable perhaps can you see it now uh yes ma'am go ahead you could yeah. open the page we sell online and then uh, guide everybody yeah so no uh, basically this is my personal uh, account so you uh, log into your account and click on this and then here there is a option to create post story room on page so i'll go here and create page so i'll give page name here say web dream then you select the category say information technology company description web design and development okay so with this i'll create a page so create page web dream was created so now you can here then you can choose what all you want to write for home photos videos you can go on creating post etc so add a profile picture click here then as a profile i'll add logo then i can add a cover photo oh uh, i don't have so i can 
स्लाइडर ओके सो सेव सो नाउ यू कैन सी द पेज हियर द कवर फोटो देन यू कैन ऑलवेज एड इवन द बटन यू कैन क्रिएट बटन ऑल्सो लाइक फॉलो देन गिफ्ट कार्ड ऑर्डर बुक नाव कॉल नाव सो ऑल दीज बटन यू कैन क्रिएट ओके सो so that's it is so simple within 2 3 minutes uh, i could create the uh, facebook page business page any questions anyone has any questions uh, we have one minute to spare otherwise then we'll start with the next session uh okay so i guess then uh, every, everybody is back also in case anyone is taking a break and we'll now start with the next session uh dipali ma'am uh, do yeah. you have are you sure we've not missed out any question or anything otherwise we'll start uh if any questions we have missed can you uh post it again so that we can take it up i think we have covered all the questions okay uh, okay good then we'll start with the next session yeah so the next session is session number 4 hands on training and interactive session for registering to visal online by dipali ma'am dipali ma'am you have the floor yeah so i'm sharing my screen again and yes, uh, yeah so now uh, we have understood what is e-commerce what is digital marketing so let us go and uh, to our portal vselonline.org and uh, take exactly the practical experience how to sell online so this is uh, completely interactive and i'll help each and everybody to uh, sign up and so that you your uh, small uh, mini store will be ready so that you can uh, start creating your profile which can be used by you for your promotion or for sell, sending it as a catalog to your customers or to the prospective buyers so it will be definitely useful for your business growth so let us see how to do that so the presentation structure will have first creation of entrepreneur account and then we'll take question and answers so what is we sell online it is an online platform which is aimed to facilitate e-commerce capacity building for emerging women entrepreneurs basically we sell online is more of a practical platform to understand how to sell online and it gives information about uh, even e-commerce manual is there e-commerce course is there uh, as dr rajan has explained you uh, you can take the e-commerce course also and uh, this portal will help to generate leads right now uh, we don't have exactly payment gateway integration or shipping gateway uh, all these facilities but in future we'll be converting it uh, into online selling platform also so that you can accept payment online but now uh, due to different mobile wallets and uh, the ease of payment gateway is available like you can just give your google pay number phone pay number or paypal email id and you can accept the payment directly from the bio so that is possible and uh, here you can maintain your catalog <coughs> so this is the screenshot of vselonline.org it looks like this uh i what i will do is i will directly go Uh, to the main portal and directly uh, show it live 
uh, you all please keep your uh, identity proof in a soft copy format ready so that you can uh, directly start selling online uh, through this so first we'll go to we sell online.org w e s e l l online.org so this is the portal this portal has login of customer and entrepreneur and it has popular categories like handicraft textile artificial jewelry and many other travel it transport then we have a buy from various countries right now we have eight countries from south asia bangladesh bhutan india afghanistan maldives nepal pakistan and sri lanka so here we will go to the login and then we go to entrepreneur so first you need to give your first name because you don't have account we will create one account so login and entrepreneur and create entrepreneur account so i will start giving the details enter your first name whatever password you give i encourage you to go to notepad and paste it so that you will not make any mistake you need to re enter the password Uh, just to add on, if anyone is facing any issues, feel free to uh, put it on the chat box or raise your hands. Thank you. Okay, so I entered one email, then the password twice, enter your mobile number. enter your office address select the business type whether you are from government department distributor small scale industry importer manufacturer or you are agency so I am a small scale industry. Select the product category. Say I am a florist. Select the service category if you are also into services. So I am also into services like gifting services. So I can select other services. Select your currency. You are going to list the products and the prices in your local currency. Now you need to upload your identity proof, which should be in the format of JPG, PNG or PDF. This is mandatory. This is the only one important thing and mandatory thing which is uh, uh, necessary that is your ID proof, any national ID proof like passport, Aadhaar card, PAN card, national social security number, all that you, uh, any particular identity proof you can upload here. So 
so i'll upload my passport then you can enter your profile we are online florist offer offering fresh flowers delivery in 300 cities in india click cross is already i have so with with love that also i think okay so this is about my business profile so i'll paste it here and dipali is award winning right woman and the so you can add your description your name company name brand name and uh, your firm details current turnover if you want to add it 7 lakh 10 lakh which ever is the suitable amount and then select i am not a robo select i accept terms and conditions so are you doing with me how many people could uh, fill up the form can just raise the hands okay thinly uh, could do it uh, can we take a moment here and pause and if, if there is anyone facing any issue feel please raise your hand okay issue for issues also they are raising hand and for uh, those who could complete also raising hand means little confusing i think so you can type in the chat box if you have any issue my colleague vaishnavi is helping you all she can guide you immediately uh, this Ma'am, this question from Upasna saying, "Can we do it uh, later?" Upasna, I'll encourage you to at least uh, do the basic registration for process, and then uh, at the later date you can keep uploading your products details. But I would encourage you to do the registration bit at least now, so that in case you're struggling anywhere or any issue that you face, uh, we are all here to help you. Yes, if you do right now, uh, you will be part of the system and then uh, also part of the network. And uh, if any problem comes, we'll be helping you. So uh, it's very simple. It will just take two minutes to fill up the form. Uh, Ma'am, there's a question coming in. Uh, what should be my category for herbal tea and grains and flour? Food, uh, food category you can select. From where I should find the form? so i'll go back again first you go to write in your browser we sell online.org www.wesellonline.org click there enter uh, there i have also entered this website link on the uh, chat box if anybody is not able to type it out you could pick it up from the chat box yeah after going there click on login move your mouse to login and you can click on entrepreneur it is here then you get this form create entrepreneur account form I hope now Leila and Rosina, we are able to answer your queries. You were not being able to get it on the first go. Yes, Tindi, it is processed food. Yes. Identification proof is your Aadhaar card or your passport or PAN card. You can enter uh, 
in the form of jpg png or pdf format if your category is not there you can select category as others and we can later on update it in your profile section okay that's great laila is yes. everybody able to do it uh, okay uh, ma'am uh, would your team would you want to answer question from upasna yes you can parallelly do it like uh, you can uh, go to your laptop uh you can keep your mobile besides you and attend the session parallelly or just uh, go even on a, even on the mobile uh opasna we can open parallel windows and your this training won't get interrupted because this training is on zoom platform um okay so ma'am would you want to tell everybody about the uh, fields once again yeah so once you go to vselonline.org you go to login you click on entrepreneur you get this form so here enter your name middle name last name select gender by default it is female write email id give password twice give your phone number your address and your city and pin code country select category as small scale industry if you are sme small scale industry industry enterprise uh, and then select the main category as uh, your whatever is your business if you don't find your category select as others so that in the uh, control panel you can always update it and then you select the currency i have selected inr because i am from india you can select your currency depending on you are if you are in hong kong select as hong kong dollar and uh, in indonesia rupiya and all so that you can do it so i'll select inr here then the identity proof it should be uploaded in the form of jpg png or pdf these are the standard formats so if your uh, identity proof is in the form of word document you will get online pdf converter upload there and convert it into pdf format and upload that so choose that file i have chosen my passport and then profile picture if you want to upload any profile picture you can choose it so i'll choose my profile picture also because i have time so i have uploaded uh, chosen my image also then write two three lines about your profile write give your brand name then write few lines about your business write turnover turnover if you don't want to write don't want to disclose is fine you can just skip it because it's optional select i am not robo and then submit Uh, so this is not enter the office number so i'll enter <coughs> okay so thank you please log in to proceed so already have selected now click hubli at hotmail dot com. Select that email ID which you are given. Suppose I forget my password, then you have to give your forgot password. okay so this is 
the dashboard what I get after creating the login. So I'll wait here for some time to all of you to uh, complete your sign up process and I'll just see if there are any questions. Uh, Ma'am, was your team also, uh, would your team be able to tell how many have been able to register? We have about 85 participants right now. Yeah. Uh, uh, what is this big, uh, I'm not getting this uh, big message. Uh, from you can Lord. ignore, there's some random message. Uh, you can ignore that person. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, so, I think, uh, Kinley, could you create your login? What should I put on my personal profile? You can put your achievements and what you exactly do. Like uh, you are into organic food and uh, you can uh, tell about your personal achievements or anything which is, uh, which will help to build your brand or build a trust with your customer. So definitely positive points you can add there. If you have a good qualification about business or your food related business, you are specialist in any field, you can add that. Uh, is anyone have facing any issues? Uh, you, have the, you have the floor right now and you can ask questions. We have only four accounts so far, four entries. So we'll wait till other people out of uh, say 80. Uh, for all the ladies from Cambodia as well, uh, you can share your product details on this and we'll try accommodating the best possible. We also have a lot of participants from India, Pakistan, Bangladesh. Nepal, I see. I uh, request everybody to participate in this. If anyone is unable to create it and uh, can share their uh, identity proof with me, I can create account for them. But you need to email your identity proof quickly to me. I'll share my email here. Uh, Ma'am, there's a question coming in. Do we need to fill a new password for entrepreneur account login? Yes, you can give whichever password you want. But it should be having one capital letter, one special character and at least uh, one uh, number, minimum eight characters. Also, uh, I'll take this opportunity and would want to check with uh, Deepti who had raised a question before we began the session. Uh, Deepti, were we able to resolve, resolve some of your questions that you were asking? Are you uh, there Deepti? Uh, Ma'am, uh, if you forget your password, do you need a new password? Uh, yes, you have to uh, give forgot password link. Then you will get one link to your pass uh, to your email, and you can reset your password. Uh, okay, Nimra, you can do it later. Then, if your identity proof is not there with you. Okay, that's great, Chitra. You could register. Very good. Anyone having any questions? Uh, Okay, uh, for those who couldn't do, I will repeat the process again. First, you go to your browser, type vcellonline.org. After that, this page will open. 
In this page, go to login and entrepreneur. Once you click on entrepreneur, actually now dashboard is opening, but the form will open. And on that form, you need to enter all the details like name, email, address, phone number, your category of your business, the currency, the uh, profile details of yourself, the profile details of the business and your ID proof. Once you enter that, you will get one, um, e uh, one confirmation submit button. Once you do, you will get this dashboard. So right now we have not even we are doing email verification. So the process is very simple. Without verifying your email, immediately your account will get created and you will be able to log into the dashboard. Uh, Ma'am, there's a question that has come in. Uh, how can we sell a advanced saffron through this website? Yeah, you need to first create your account and then you can list the Afghan saffrons and you will start generating leads. Regarding your licenses and the process of selling uh, internationally, all that you need to take care offline. So uh, we will be able to generate leads for you. And even I'm interested in your product. So uh, you please list it so that we can uh, create interest and the leads for you. And then you can uh, supply to us. So uh, our tech team can write how many are registered now? Kiran and Vaishnavi. Yeah, you are welcome Aziz. Okay, now eight accounts are created. Still very less number. Uh, why I am insisting on creating account is the whole session of tomorrow and today's later on session, everything is uh, dependent on that because we'll be learning how to upload the photograph, how to generate the inquiry, how to upgrade the product details, how to update uh, service details, how to inquire as a customer, all those things we'll be doing practically. So if you have account, you will be able to do all those activities and you will be easily managing your portal uh, in future but if you don't have account then you will be dependent on somebody else to guide you so i insist you to again uh, try and uh, create the entrepreneur account Okay, Sonam. I think uh, Sonam, you were there for the last session also. So uh, you could create account or no uh, uh, in the last session. I'm not aware. Uh, Dipali ma'am, would you want to go on the VSL online page and take everybody a little bit to go through the page and the training platform so that everybody gets a little more hands on and they might get interested to register? Okay, so I will log out. Yes, take everybody through the first page and the product details and also that will get, get, get everybody a little more idea. Yeah, so this is the portal vselonline.org. And uh, if we go on entrepreneurs, you can see there are around 250 entrepreneurs registered here. And uh, you can see uh, who all are here. And uh, these are alphabetically listed. So this is consortium of women entrepreneurs of India. Then Darshana Shreshta. So, uh, if you click on their name, you can see their profile. And you can see their products like beauty and wellness. So, Darshana has listed their products. But if you want to see the profile, 
you need to log in first so i will log in first because for everybody the profile will not be available only after login you will be able to it is invalid one minute Uh, Ma'am, in the meantime, would you like to take a question? I am an entrepreneur. I have been providing HR services. Can I register? Yes, all service providers also can register, and uh, you can market your even HR services to other entrepreneurs. There are so many other entrepreneurs to whom you can always uh, market your products. I don't know. I'm unable to log in with this. So I log in with different ID. My password is wrong. Okay, so uh, this is the item which already I have added in the shopping cart. So suppose entrepreneurs, I want to see somebody's profile. I need to log in. Then only you'll be able to see the profile. So she is Afroza Nazni, and uh, her uh, company is uh, Shumi's Kitchen. and uh, she has not added much in her personal profile so you can check profile of other women entrepreneurs alia is into alhuda mustaqim travel and tours so it is a uh, uh, travel and tour approved by iata and uh, government of pakistan all that information she has given so she is basically a service provider so you can be a product uh, provider or you can be a service provider so both of uh, like products and services are listed on our site so you can utilize that Clear. There's a question coming in. Can we not use our name and use company brand name in the profile instead? Sorry, uh, regarding brand name. Ah, uh, no. It's saying, ah, uh, can we not use our own name and ah uh, use company brand name in the profile instead? Yes, but basically, it is woman entrepreneur portal. so we are using uh, women entrepreneurs uh, as a main uh, brand ambassador so you yourself also are like brands so definitely you can use it uh, like uh, uh, your name also or or your uh, your personal name or your company name but we recommend we suggest to go for your name because we are listing you as entrepreneur uh just to reply to the query of mr aziz i cannot create entrepreneur account saying that it is for women only uh yes aziz uh for, to register as an entrepreneur uh, it's only for women entrepreneurs however you may register as a customer and you can uh, raise inquiry for any of the products that you find relevant okay uh, should i fill should we fill in current turnover yes you can fill in current turnover i can't log in can i have a new account yes you can have a new account if you have forgotten the password you can give forgot password and uh, you can uh, use your previous gmail and password uh, can i share personal profile link or the personal profile details box yes you can uh, create a link also like uh, your linkedin profile or your personal website and you can give it and also that current turnover field is optional so you can leave it blank and how this will benefit you is you will be getting leads because this whole big uh, network we are forming between women entrepreneurs and also this portal will be promoted with the all the un agencies uh, so uh, all over world the uh, name will be spread and uh, people will be prompted to buy through women nowadays uh, 
uh, supply diversity is uh, there and uh, people want to buy from women owned minority owned or disabled owned businesses so people who are looking to buy from women uh, will come to this portal and they will get the leads so to promote yourself and your business and also if you don't have website then you need not invest uh, again money and uh, go for new website you can create a, a mini store here and that can be used as a mini website so definitely it can be used as a static website right now it will be more like a static or lead generation website because it is not generating uh, it is unable to accept payments so though it is uh, not accepting payment it will be helpful for you as e-commerce because it will generate leads for you I filled in the full form but it's not accepting my password yes in the password give one character capital and one as a special character either dollar symbol hash symbol percentage symbol and also give uh, one or two numbers then only it will be accepting your password because we want to want you all to use strong passwords we are giving you uh, these uh, guidelines that one uh, strong uh, one strange character uh, one uh, capital letter and uh, numbers so combination of alphanumeric uh, password you can use it um, how do we yeah uh, go ahead ma'am you're covering all the questions go ahead how do we connect with other members i clicked on their profiles but unable to connect yeah if you want to connect with other members first you need to have profile so first you create your own profile and your own account because it is not open for all otherwise everybody will copy all the profiles so only women entrepreneurs or customers who are registered to the portal can access the other profile so first you create your login and profile and then only you will be able to connect with other members uh, ma'am i have got a direct message uh, asking uh, from nepal can we edit our details in the profile yes you uh, you will be able to edit it in your dashboard first you uh, create whatever is uh, available with you uh, just create a simple profile with two three lines later on in your dashboard you will be able to edit your profile add your story and uh, add your profile uh, products everything is possible uh, once you log in uh, uh, how to how it will benefit men that is a question uh, for aziz <laughs> right now we are promoting women and uh, men are already promoted well i think uh, but uh, you can uh, be a customer so i i wish you can uh, sign up as a customer and uh, benefit other women <laughs> that will be great or maybe uh, if you have any woman in your organization you can register it uh, on your on her name and uh, utilize the platform uh, Ma'am, would you like to help Upasna because she's a message again. I've done exactly that, but it's still not accepting. Okay, I'm uh, giving you a personal uh, password to us. She uh, she is telling her password is not accepting, right? Uh, one second, I'll unmute. Upasna, uh, can you speak and tell us what issue that you're facing? Uh, yeah. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just Upasna. need to. But, uh, it, it's written entrepreneur uh, login first and then the uh, uh, account creation right so i'm uh, i haven't filled in the password even for the entrepreneur login so is that something that we had filled in earlier we had logged in and i'm supposed to be putting the same password and then this uh, uh, account creation would um, uh, be allowed is that so uh, okay mm -hmm. antipali ma'am before you begin can you go on the main page on the, the create login and also i'm on a mobile so i don't know if mobile works the same way as your uh, desktop and i do not have my login id in case we uh, i had kind of uh, created see, something uh, before yeah yeah see what it is is once you click on entrepreneur if you already have login you can give here but if you don't have you need to create account yeah, so I, I don't remember if I had created a, uh, an ID before signing into this uh, thing because I wouldn't be having the password here right now. I'll have to go home and check it. No, no, so, what uh, you what do I, my is, question is that yeah, it yeah. will be that password will be in your email, which you can check it in your mobile. So you just give forgot password, enter your email okay. ID. If it is registered, you will get the password by email to you. If it is not registered, so that, you, sorry. If so it is are you not talking about the yeah. 
because there are two things one is the entrepreneur login on the top and then what it's showing to me is the entrepreneur account login entrepreneur account login account entrepreneur account. login both are same if you are already uh, have, have you registered before to vsl online uh no i don't think so because what okay let me just come to the page i can see the entrepreneur login and then i see the create entrepreneur account i'm sorry i was getting yeah. confused with that yeah account so, once uh, you create then only this login will be created this is the process how uh, to create entrepreneur login account this filling okay, up so the that, form that, okay so that means i need not fill the password for the entrepreneur login i no, no, straight no. away i straight away first create the entrepreneur account am right. i right yeah yeah okay yeah. so that's what i'm doing i filled up my whole form and uh, i filled in the password as well with an upper case lower cases and a special character and the numbers right everything i've done yeah yeah, yeah. when i'm coming down it's um, um, again it says verification has gone so again i'm submitting so it's taking me back to the password which is again going blank so i don't know there's something wrong with it i don't know why it's not uh, taking password you have to give twice there yeah, is uh, there is, yeah there is there is one password and there is a reconfirmation of the password so reconfirmation is already written there i'm already okay so, like uh, person i will create account for you okay but I, you need to uh, right now i'll up, upload a dummy uh, id proof for you you need to upload it again uh, in the uh, control panel okay? maybe, maybe what i can do is i can just try once again by deleting the uh, reconfirmation password and fill both the password yeah yeah, so like yeah, yeah yeah what you do is you type your password in notepad and copy paste from there that will help you to make it same okay okay so i uh, let me do that meanwhile you can take somebody else please i'll just, yeah. just get back thank you yeah, thank you thank you is there anyone else who would want support i can un unmute you or you can raise your hand please yeah selling saffron through the website by having customer account that is not possible you need to be entrepreneur only to sell something only uh, as a customer you can inquire but you cannot uh, sell how can i utilize it for marketing my saffron you need to uh, create a entrepreneur account and then only you will be able to market it entrepreneur account anybody from your organization a woman uh, is there you can create on her name and then market it uh, we have about 79 participants right now so i'll uh, ma'am what's the score on registration is there an, and it would anybody want to raise any question and uh, we want to check with us Kiran, can you just uh, type how many you have registered? Eleven. Today is going very slow. Actually, anybody from Cambodia uh, could sign up. Any doubt do you have? I can help you. Are we going too fast? You can just give us message here or. Uh, you can raise your hand. You can talk to us. Uh, okay. Ma'am, there's a lady help wanting your help. Let me unmute her. One moment. Uh, Hart, I am unmuting you. You please go ahead and speak. Hello, um, thank you for this. I try many times to create the account, but um, it error with phone number, you know, and I try many times to change password, lowercase um number and special character, but still cannot. So I reload the page and then I want to try again. But um, now I think that if you have, maybe it will be faster. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what you can do is like uh, to my personal message, I'm sending you a message to my personal message. You give all the details so that I will type it uh, from your side. Okay. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, 
Kiran, could you please confirm uh, this Radha Bhumi from Nepal who wants to take a confirmation if her account is got registered or not? Uh, Radha, can you confirm uh, that you're being able to log in? Uh, the team is saying that you should be able to see the dashboard if you've been able to log in. Be type in your details on the entrepreneur login page once again and see whether you're being able to uh, see your dashboard or not. How about the ladies from Bangladesh, from Nepal, Bhutan? Anyone facing any issues from ladies from Pakistan? Uh, let us know, we can help you out. I wish there was a way I could make my entrepreneur account now and upload my proof of identity later tonight. You do one thing, you upload one dummy profile uh, proof now and you can always upload it uh, later on. Uh, can you just type your city name and uh, zip code uh, hack? Okay, I'm uploading a dummy uh, this one. Is there anyone in the meantime would want to ask any question or would want to put it on the chat box? Feel free to do so. I would like to highlight once again to everybody that this is for products and services. This is a platform not only for products, it is for services as well. And uh, there are a lot of categories under which you could just place your profile there. Yeah, your account is created. I will give you the password now. Is there any other lady from Cambodia who's uh, struggling to register? We can help you out. What is this entrepreneur login? I, am I to create a new one? Then only I'll be able to continue and create. Uh, Upasana, yes, you need to create your entrepreneur account first. 
So go to create entrepreneur account, fill up the whole form. Then only you click on login. Forget about entrepreneur login right now. Shall I create account for you, Upasana? Like how Hack has given me all the information like that, you need to give me all the information. Uh, do you want Dipali ma'am to, uh, to unmute Upasana so that she can speak with you? Yeah. Upasana, you can speak. Uh, I'm... I'm, I've filled up everything. It's not that you know, I'm doing it for the first time, but it's just not accepting. I'm, so I'm just wondering, is it that I need to log in first and then create an account? There's something that is, you know, it's not working. No, but no, you're saying you I can't log in. About yeah, that's what. So, so I, you, you I, give I, your phone number. Vaishnavi will call yeah. you and help you to fill up. You know, it, it would have been much easier for me to do it on a laptop while, um, um, you know, because I, I have, it's a working day for me. So I'm trying to do this along with the thing, you know, I could have seen your thing. I, I know it's very simple. You know, there's nothing much that I need to do, but it's just that it's not accepting. I don't know why it's not accepting. Maybe you I can try to name Give your phone number. Vaishnavi will uh, call, uh, okay. talk to you. Okay. 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 Thanks. Welcome. Uh, Dipali ma'am, could you remove the pointer? There are a lot of lines coming on the screen. Oh, I was on the chat. Okay, now what is the count now? Uh, we have a hand raised ma'am from Gayani. Uh, Gayani, I'll unmute you. You can take your, uh, uh, say a question. Ma'am, how is my profile? I already created it. Huh? Can I, can I know about it? Uh, Gayani, are you, after logging in, are you able to see your dashboard? Uh, I exit, uh, exit that dashboard, uh, miss. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll share the link again on the chat box. Go on that link and try connecting once again. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I will check Granny's uh, profile. Yeah, it's good. I mean, you have given everything like Facebook link, Instagram link, your story and uh, website. What is this you are given? Uh, give proper uh, filled in website. This you need to edit again. Uh, Ma'am, I'll suggest the technical team to uh, check this and come back to Gyani one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, in the meantime, if anybody has any questions, you can raise your hand or else we can continue. Yeah, so the whole session goes with this only, like we need to create the account and then only we'll be able to upload the products and uh, we'll be able to go for the further details. So uh, once you create the account, you'll be logged in and then you go to my account. So I have here my profile, like entrepreneur ID, name, email, phone number, selling currency, and uh, I added personal profile. Then I added my story and uh, map also. Map link you can update, like a map address also you can add. So company name, Web Dreams India, then uh, the website, 
the email id phone number everything i have given here and what we have given here is meta details meta details means uh, on what on what keywords people will be finding us so web design is my keyword website development is my keyword and if somebody is searching website designing web development from india then they should be able to find me so i am giving all this here so uh, meta keywords are the keywords on which people generally search us and reach us so i'll be giving keywords here web design website design mobile app development digital marketing these are the services what i offer so in case of gani she has to give like batik batik print and batik apparel and what all she has all those so dipali is proprietor this is the description what i am adding of leading web development and e-commerce firm web dreams in india she offers e-commerce consultancy in india so these are uh, keywords i have added here and then i say update okay so that is updated here here i have updated the meta description meta keywords and titles uh, ma'am we have a question coming in from uh, sinhan when i click submit i thought it was success uh, i am trying to log in and see the dashboard it says invalid id and password i think you are giving the wrong password so give forgot password and uh, then no. mm. you can give forgot password what's your name username we'll see whether you are registered or not Uh, Simhan, can you put on the chat box your profile name? We'll try checking it in. Is there any other lady uh, facing any issue? We can help, or else otherwise uh, we'll bring the session to a close soon. So how many we have now? Women registers, women entrepreneurs registered. Fourteen was the last number. Ma'am, she is given her uh, email address. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Kiran, can you check sim hang text at gmail dot com? Okay, now we have fifteen women registered. still uh, other almost 60 70 women have not registered i don't know what is the problem you are facing if you can ask us i will be able to uh, help you uh, we'll keep the floor open for 2 uh, minutes otherwise then we'll bring the session to a close okay i'll encourage everybody to register uh, and in case you're facing any issues feel free to ask Uh, okay, uh, Bini, I'll share the link again once again for your reference.
I'm sharing the link once again with everybody. Also for everyone's reference, uh, you could also come to this page via uh, the uh, page uh, details that Dr. Rajan had shared during his presentation. That's unscap.vcelonline.org. There also there's an icon to, which can lead you to the VSL online platform. Uh, the parliament, would you want to take a minute and show that as well, so that if, if anybody is missing out on this link, they'll know how to go about it? Yeah. So uh, we have unscap.vcelonline.org. This is our main portal. unescapscap.vcelonline.org. And here we have e-learning course, which will lead to the e-learning course, which you can take up which is divided into four modules. Uh, this is at self pace you can uh, complete and you can take a download a certificate which will be from EIF and UNSCAP. Then you, we have e-commerce portal here that is vcellonline.org which is used for lead generation and which is used for uh, by women entrepreneurs to sell online. Uh, here we have logo of uh, vcell online which is a woman with a wings so women become like a queen she has a crown also and uh, with the wings of e-commerce she can fly high that's the uh, message what we want to give from uh, this logo and then we have e-commerce manual and publications which are uh, coming soon e-commerce manual will be updated soon so you just click on e-commerce portal you go to vcellonline.org so once this portal opens you move your mouse to account settings. Here we have my account and log out because already I logged in my session is there. Suppose I log out then it will show like login and then we have customer login and entrepreneur login. So you have to now because you are a woman entrepreneur you have to click on entrepreneur so that you have to go for creation of entrepreneur account. This is the form. And in this form, uh, all the basic information what I explained before, like name, email, and password, phone number, office contact number, address, city, pin code, business type, product category, service category, currency. Only important thing what we need here is your identity proof document in the form of JPG, PNG, or PDF format your profile picture which you can select or if you don't select it is not mandatory and then add your business name business profile details personal profile details click on i'm not robo and submit it after that you will get a username and password which already i have got here i have already filled, filled up now click kubli at gmail.com and the password once I do submit, I will get this dashboard. So in this dashboard, I'll be able to edit my profile or add inquiries and add products, add services, uh, fulfill the inquiries, all those things I'll be able to do. Tomorrow we'll have complete session on product creations, services creations, inquiry submission and inquiry receipt, all that. So right now we are in process of creating the entrepreneur login. So I encourage all of you to create your entrepreneur login. I couldn't register with password problem. Uh, so uh, what you do is I will give you one password. Now you said that only there so that you will not face any problem. I have given you paste it there directly so that you will be able to create it. Okay, so Nimra has successfully created great. Uh, uh, for everybody's reference, I am also sharing my email address and uh, the VSL online email address. Feel free to get in touch with us in case you plan to register probably in the evening or after the session is over. Uh, it's on the chat box and you, anyone can take a note of it and you can get in touch with us. Also, if anybody has not shared the contact details, we'll encourage you to share your contact details with us so that we can add you to the WhatsApp group. Uh, so I think now the parliament will get, get the session to a close uh, and we'll move on to the next session.
yeah <clears throat> so thank you and uh, thanks to those all people who could register other people can try today evening tomorrow also we have session so tomorrow you can ask the query if you couldn't register uh, if you can't register today tonight then you can ask the queries tomorrow okay thank you uh, thank you so much ma'am now uh, i'll give the floor to dr rajan dr rajan you have the floor okay so thank you dipali ji for uh, taking this uh, through all the day and anush uh, i don't know whether she's there she might have left uh, we have radhika radhika can we see you okay hi so radhika will be uh, your session is tomorrow radhika right or day after tomorrow sir tomorrow okay very good so uh, radhika is also there as one of the resource persons she has been working and uh, we have been collaborating a lot on on gender but thank you all participants uh, it was pleasure uh, to have you here i just have to request uh, that tomorrow when you join uh, because you will have to you know upload uh, again uh, there might be certain questions and uploading your product etc so it's better to join on a computer or a laptop rather than mobile because uh, it's very difficult to to connect and upload things through mobile this is not a webinar this is a hands on training program where you will require so i would suggest you can use both you can use mobile to listen uh, to what the speakers are saying and on a laptop you can go online to those websites that you are working on uh, that is the best way to be trained uh i would also uh, request you all those who have not registered or who have uh, uh, been unable despite wanting to the unscap uh, e learning uh, course please go and register so tomorrow uh, first 10 minutes sugira will help you if you find any problem in in registering on unscap.vcelonline.org for the e learning course and secondly also try those who have not yet registered on vcell online tonight uh, try your hands for 5 10 minutes so tomorrow beginning uh, again in those 5 10 minutes dipali and subira can help you in registering for those who have and you can join slightly early so subira you can announce maybe if you start 12:30 then they can join at 12:15 for those who really want a hands on help so please be there at 12:15 tomorrow Uh, so that first 15 minutes if you have any challenges and problems which you have faced in, uh, tonight in joining uh, uh, we would help you and uh, evaluation is only in the post right uh, uh, yes so we'll... sir we do it on the sixth okay so that will come later uh, but uh, please note uh, some of you definitely given your interest uh, interaction and your interest i see that when we do a physical meeting uh, some of you could be our potential candidate and therefore please complete the online training course get the certificate the register on we sell online upload your product because before we select um, uh, and and we pay for your ticket and stay etc uh, we will verify that you have you have done all so uh, be careful uh, thank you have a good evening all and thank you everybody see you tomorrow suvira so over to you thank you so much dr rajan uh just one last thing to conclude i'll encourage everybody to please share uh, like a small snip not snippet or a story your e-commerce journey and how this training is can help you and about how covid has impacted your business and we would like to sh share this on our social media platform also and also share it on our website and among our various platforms that we use uh we look forward to uh, all of you sharing your stories with us Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice day and meet you all tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you everybody. Yeah, I would suggest in the chat box you can put your name either the first name or full name and the mobile number so that we can connect you to the WhatsApp group. Thank you. Vaishnavi, I hope you are noting their name and the mobile number so you can you can 
uh, maybe you can create it uh, tonight or tomorrow itself. Thank you. Bye-bye.